You get in your own California time. Pacific Coast. Yeah, we're on Pacific time. It is almost 8 o'clock, so I'm just going to go ahead and start this. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It is uh, the Drainism and Sally Flat Earth Predictions and Modeling discussion that they were having earlier today, and I thought it was something that actually was kind of interesting that people may oh, want to listen sorry. to. So I suggested that we kind of go on to a hangout and kind of discuss these things. And let me turn off my audio here so I make sure to get no back, background noise. So what was kind of going to go, go on was they were kind of discussing um, Flat Earth and prediction abilities and what predictions are. And I think Stanley asked a great question to Duranism is what he thinks prediction means because I had noted that the program Stellarium I think makes predictions because the Stellarium program is based upon uh, round earth model and so you can put any time and date in there and it'll say mm, hey you got an eclipse that's happening this time. In fact the eclipse, the, the total eclipse that happened if you actually put in the time and date and the location it actually shows the moon while you're going right in front of the sun and doing a total eclipse. Uh, if that had been prior to the eclipse, which we I've d I did do, that that is a prediction. Um, so you guys were talking about that. So go ahead and continue on the conversation and, and let me know what you what you were talking about, Drainus, by what you mean. Oh, by the way, welcome to my channel. You've never been here before, so hey. Thank you. Cool. It's it's Jaronism, by the way, but Jaronism. What I what I what I keep calling you. Uh, Jaronism. Uh, either way, that's kind of a cool name, though. Jaronism kind of sounds like a like a, a type of element. But Jaronism. Yeah, I wish okay. I could go back in time and change the channel name, but uh, it is what it is now. Uh, it is what it is. I get that. I get branding. So Jaronism, uh, and, and your yeah, name is uh, Jaron, right? Is that what it's called, Jaronism? Uh, Somebody asked me that the other day. I wish, I wish the same thing, actually. You want to be called <laughs> Jaronism too, Stanley? <laughs> no, I, I wanted. I, I wish I would have picked a different channel name in the beginning, but it is what it is now. So. Yeah, at the time when I first started or when I decided to make a channel, it was just supposed to be about. Like it's going to be my way, my meism. I'm just going to trust myself, and then uh, didn't really think about the whole connotation with religions and isms. And um, so, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't have named it that. But it is what it is. Well, it's good to know because somebody had asked me why it's called Jaronism, and I was like, I think it's because his name's Jaron, but I don't want him to make sure. Which, you yeah, know, I don't want him to. Place. You know, yours would be Stevenism. Stevenism. Oh, yeah. that, oh, can I go back in my time and change my channel name? <laughs> Steven. <laughs> no, nah, man, people think I'm narcissistic enough, um, which is kind of ironic because right. I'm so the opposite. Was, but um, You're trying to start a cult. And it's, yeah, it's, but that would have to be how to do it, huh? Stevisms. You, yeah. Yeah, you guys could be all little tried. like Steve advocates and Steve bots and awesome. Sally, how'd you right. get your name real quick before we go into this flat earth stuff? Um. In the beginning, I was uh, just thinking that you know, people aren't reasoning soundly, and that's that's where it came <gasps> oh, from. Oh, I get that. I get that. Yeah. And so it, it didn't like start. A, off, did it start off being uh, anti flat Earth channel, or did it kind of like evolve into that? Yeah, my very my my very first. The whole reason I even created the channel was uh, to do just one video where I was just going to do a little bit of math and end this whole flat Earth thing, and uh, I thought that was that was going to be all it took, and. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, my first my first few videos are just me. Like, I, I didn't have any experience with video editing, nothing. And it just, just hey, I'm just going to do a video on my phone, and it's just me drawing on a piece of paper. <laughs> I, was like, I look back on it now, and I go, I don't know why, why I thought I was going to convince anybody of anything with this. <laughs> and it might have, like, a sound effects that play that will just blow your eardrums out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, at the time when people would say something in the comments like what is wrong with your sound I was like really take I was like taking offense to like what's wrong with it everything's fine what do you relax now I listen back I'm like yelling at myself you're like oh I, I still I still can't normalize sound because I haven't got the right software apparently iMovie isn't very good at it at all yeah you know, it, you know what it is um it is difficult to do. I'm just now learning some of the ins and outs of, of audio cuz I'm trying to do different things with my guitar and yeah it's a bitch there's a, a site that I use. Um, let me get the exact name of it. I think it's Auphonics. Um, it's, um, sure and by the way, this is this was an impromptu. Nobody had word up on this because we just decided like 10 minutes ago <laughs> to do this or something. So if you didn't get notification uh, prior to this, it's because there wasn't any. <laughs> it's Auphonic is A U. Uh, what did I say? A U D. No, I don't know. I U D. Yeah, A U. No. Sorry. Uh, phonics? No, I don't remember how you hooked, say it. I know, hooked on phonics. You... My parents Close. wanted me to get me that from when I was a kid because uh, I had a speech impediment for uh, most of my life. And 
They're like maybe hooked on phonics would get him. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I could, I couldn't even pronounce certain off, words like anything phonics. with an R. Forget it. Off phonics. A U P H O N I C. Off phonics. Yeah. Yeah. The cool thing about it is you get like two hours free a month. I think it's two hours. Um, and you can just upload a, a video or an audio file, and then it it levels out all the sound for you. Nice. Oh, that's cool. I use it for some of the shorter videos. All right, well, let's jump right into this. I might as well get into the, the topic that we were talking Wait, about so before. Thinking, What's that? The thing I was laughing at when you said that Stellarium uh, predicts eclipses, mm -hmm. which it, I guess it depends on what you mean exactly by predicts. But, I mean, does a calendar predict you know, what day of the week it's going to be on in, in, in 10 years? No, the calendar. See, the calendar is just a, a, a something that the prediction has already been made, then it's been noted on something. Solarium is actually a program that uses an actual algorithm and the actual mathematics to say, okay, put in any date that you want, and it'll tell you in the future if there's an eclipse. That's the only way we know that there's going to be an eclipse that day if, if the model works. And so what I was trying to explain is if we use a round Earth model, we can make that prediction that in two years from now there's going to be an eclipse, and you can see it from this position, you can see it full on at you know at this latitude or th that latitude. Now, so then why doesn't NASA just say that their eclipse models are based on a globe? Well, what do they th what do they say it's placed upon? Based on the um, algorithms provided by Fred Aspernack. Yeah, and those algorithms are based on a globe. No, he got his al algorithms from the Soros cycle. The Soros, no, the, Soros, the Soros cycle doesn't make uh, two to the second predictions, nor does it predict where the shadow is going to be exactly and all that type of stuff. It doesn't have the precise predictions that uh, we have today. It just tells you that there's going to be some type of event, but it doesn't give you the exact details of where the, uh, any of the number or the umbra or anything's going to fall. Yeah, it doesn't tell you like the size of the shadow, where it's going to go. It doesn't tell you uh, the the precise second it's going to be of specific longitude and latitude. You know, none well, of that. The thing is, if the if the globe model is what's doing that, then then why wouldn't NASA say our eclipse predictions are based on the globe model? Why would they say our eclipse predictions are based on the work by Fred Aspernack? Because Fred Aspernack did the work. I thought but, that the computer did. You just need to put in a. Well, somebody has to write the coding for the computer. The computer is just something yeah, that interprets I mean, the coding. If you put in bad code, you get you get garbage in, garbage okay, so out. Then does Solarium, you, you just answered the question. Does Solarium predict anything? No. Yeah, it makes a prediction yeah, off the off the, it the data. It uses a mathematical model to right. predict. Yeah, that's what no, a prediction it uses is. What input by a human? But the model is what the the model is making the prediction. The, the model is the, the input. Right. Right. right exactly. Yeah, the model's the input. So based upon that model, we say, hey, look, here's all. The, here's what we know about physics. Here's what we know about cosmology. Here's what we know about gravity. Giving all these different parameters, giving all these different variables, can we make a prediction of when there's going to be an eclipse? And I'll say, yes, at this date, this time, this location, you'll be able to see an eclipse. That's a prediction made by a model. Need, why the hell would you need Fred Aspernick? You're making no sense. To build the model to put into Stellarium. What do you mean? If it's if it's a globe model, you don't need somebody working. You have on to have somebody have to write the code. Computer. This still has to be a coder. Okay, hold, on. hold on. If it's as simple as here's where all the planets are. Oh, I didn't say it was orbits. simple. I think it's very complicated. <laughs> but go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm saying if it's all based on just the model, the globe Earth model, then you plug all that in, and the computer generates the dates and times for everything, and everything's set. But that's not what happens. They have a specific team, Fred Aspernack and his team who have to compile an algorithm that makes sense for the eclipses. Then you put that into Stellarium. So it doesn't just match the globe model. It's not just, we just put in a globe model and everything else comes out perfectly. That's not the way the universe works. See, that's that's why I think we're having a, a, a misunderstanding here because <clears throat> what the model is, is the math. The math is the model. Yes. I mean, that's- Math is the model, literally. Has to out, <laughs> somebody has to figure out the math, build the model, and then, and then test that model. And you test that model by making predictions. You say, okay, well, this model says that there's going to be an eclipse on this day. Then let's wait for the eclipse. Does it show up? Yes, it does. Okay, model validated. That's how that's how models work. Okay, model validated as reality or just this model works? Well, that's that's the whole thing. Models are models of reality, right? They're, they could um, be wrong. Okay. And that's, that's, what, that's why validation is, is necessary. But the the whole thing about models is, um, it's not about uh, 
is is it reality? No, it's not reality. It's a it's a model of reality, and the power of a model is that it can make predictions about reality that's the whole point of having a model okay so was there predictions of eclipses before heliocentrism very probably or, in, a, in or, approximate ones but let me let me explain this yeah. real quick if i may there's their, something called their, mo their model their model is is just it's very general gross. Doesn't make yeah very gross very, predictions. yeah very gross not precise but there's something called inst scientific realism versus scientific instrumentalism Jaronism. So, the scientific instrumentalist, like I am, that means that the model represents reality. It may not necessarily be reality per se. It may not actually be exactly what what is going on because it's something belong will be beyond our epistemic limit to actually know. As far as like let's say like the space time fabric, we we say there's a space time fabric. It seems to work. Is there such a thing that actually physically exists? I I'm not I'm not sure. But that's scientific instrumentalism. Scientific realism saying that the model is reality rather than just represents the reality. It, it's fine either way. Scientists can go either way. There's no one right <laughs> answer. I happen to, to think the instrumentalist approach is easier put and better. But the model but represents reality either way. Whether it is reality or not, it represents and it works. We can utilize it for utilitarian and function and say, okay, I can use Solarium based upon these mathematical models to, to determine any eclipse at any period of time in the future, excluding any catastrophic event. Obviously, the models will change if something causes a perturbation in the in the solar system. If we have a you know black hole come into our solar system, yeah, the model no right. longer is valid, right? So, but none of that proves that none of that says Saturn is an actual planet that is ten times the size of Earth that is you know. Uh, Three billion miles away. Well, it doesn't take none of the model that for that. that. It's that that's something we know through observations. We we know planet. We 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 have to subscribe the term planet to mean something like Saturn. Saturn is a planet by definition, right? Sure. Whether in reality it's a place somebody could go to and actually observe is is unknown. Well, there, there see, there's well, a difference it is between known. the model and the observations too. The <laughs> yes. see, observations are made. And those are facts, right? And and scientists really aren't keen on knowing all the facts. They're keen on building a model that predicts the facts that we know about and makes predictions about other facts that we don't know about. Sure. That's why that's why we want models because you, we want I'm to saying, be able to discover disagree. information. I don't disagree in any way with the uh, eclipse cycle. I don't disagree with where Saturn will be next year. I don't disagree with anything like that that's all done it's uh, been observed they've done a great job they've modeled it correctly you can even say that it's modeled to reality other than when you say that nasa starts going out there and they're showing people these pictures that they say are from some craft in orbit that's all made up well let's see that's, that's but it's, that's, it's not made up that's just personal incredulity i mean okay and saying that it isn't made up is just personal trust that's your faith that's your religion you trust it well, i don't that's what it, it comes down to it's, it's not it's not faith in a religion it's scientific consensus, and there's a difference okay. between faith That's and religion and it's scientific faith, consensus. It's faith and consensus. It's your, it's your religion. It's what you believe in. You believe in man. Scientific consensus is not faith. It is faith. <laughs> How can you say it's not faith? You believe it, what men it, say. Because it's based on observational facts. Sure, you call it fact if you want, but what I'm saying is that there's no proof of, let's say, um, for, for example, um, just because somebody says that the the other the stars are suns, well, nobody's ever seen them. No one's ever been there, right? Nobody. Well, we ha we have seen them though. We've actually seen the disc of Betelgeuse. We 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 look at a mathematical model saying that look, we have a star here that we can observe. The sun is a star. We know how it works. We can verify the mechanisms by which we obtain heat and energy from the sun through fusion power, through proton-proton reactions. We know these things exist because we've ver verified them. We've experimented. We've detected the, the correct types of photons, the correct types of neutrinos that represent the model. We, we know how gravity works. We can say these things about stars. Stars are exactly what our sun is, only on a much grander scale, most of them. Our star is a very mellow, you know. mild star. So we know how gravity works, but because it doesn't work at all in the vast outer universe, they had to invent dark matter. But you're still able to say that gravity works, even though it doesn't work in the observed 
universe. Well, dark matter is dark matter is gravity, though. I mean, I don't want to mean by invent invent gravity. When dark matter takes into account the fact there's gravitational anomalies in in galaxies, and therefore we know the only thing that affects the the uh, an object, right? Uh, two objects moving in space. The only thing that's going to affect them is gravity. That's correct. What Gra- that's well, that, well, do, is there anything else that could cause um, gravity oh, other than mass? That's- Oh, no, hold on a second. That that is what we know. See, the, yeah, that's what we know. Observation. Now, you're confusing observational facts with theory. We don't. We might not know what causes gravity, or like, or what the underlying nature of gravity is. But we can observe and make observational facts about how re- how gravity works. Right. Like, look at Jupiter. Look at the moons around Jupiter. You can use gravity, what we know about gravity, to predict how long it takes for one of those moons to go around Jupiter, and it works. That's the observational facts. Yes. I mean, the, it, it's an observational fact that Jupiter is a gigantic ball. Uh, I mean, Shoemaker-Levy makes that pretty clear. I mean, a comet crashed into it, and you could see the parts of, parts of where it crashed into it orbiting around the, the sphere of Jupiter. So, I mean, those are observational facts. Where's that? Um, what are we looking at for that? Shoemaker-Levy 9 Shoemaker-Levy. was a comet that hit... Uh, Jupiter back in the uh, was it the 80s? I've seen, I've seen little tiny videos. I've never seen you can see an impact and then pieces it's flying cool. around. It. I, think it was, I think it was early 90s. I was it 90s? Was Could have been 90s. College. I don't know. It's been slow. Yeah, I, think I, was, I think I was in college at that time. So yeah, I think it was around. In the yeah, but what, what video are you looking uh, at? 1992. I looked it up. What's that? Maybe even possible. Yeah. I said, what video are you watching that you just said that you could see pieces of it orbiting after? Oh, I don't uh, know. I've, no, I've never I, seen that. I could that, probably but. look up a video for me to find one. I mean, I've seen the impacts. Um, they've seen the holes left in Jupiter. They were able to calculate the amount of energy released. But so but let's get, back, in, let's get back to the gravity real quick. Do, one sec. The Hold gravity. On, so there was a hole, hole in the gas? There's holes in the Jupiter the you can actually fire? see, yeah. Yeah, there's holes in the atmosphere, sure. Yeah, there were, there were explosions in the atmosphere that were that left bruises, basically, yeah. Yeah. on, on uh, Jupiter. You can see them, yeah. It's on YouTube. You can just yeah. I've seen those videos. Too much, too much I was uh, okay. I so, but uh, back to well, real quick, just to sure. what I'm saying. There's, for instance, if we're talking about the ball Earth, I mean, at least okay. Both of you, I'm sure, think we've been to the moon. So I'll go ahead and pretend that that's true that we've been there. Even if you believe all that, there's there's no human being that's seen the Earth in its entirety, its ball form. Since 1972. Okay, well, hang on a sec, because you're, you're, you're jumpy topics. I want to go back to the topic you, you, you said before, because I, it really it sucks to go to a topic and then kind of just jump to something else. So, okay. real quick, about gravity. I think what Stanley said is extremely important. Whether we know okay. exactly what gravity is, it's not as important as the fact that we know how it works as far as we can utilize it to make predictions. And we know that the only thing that causes gravity is mass. Unless you can think of something else. Now, is there theoretically possible? Okay, sure. But as right now, that's the only thing that we know of that can cause gravity. So when we find missing gravity or missing mass that we can see has a gravitational effect that doesn't produce light, right? We call that dark matter because it's not visible. It's not in the visible range. It's not producing light that we can see. And so whatever this mass is made on, which baryonic mass or non-baryonic mass, who knows? But we know from our observations that there is something affecting these orbits, something affecting the stars, especially near the, the perimeter of these galaxies. That force, that whatever's causing that force, right? I shouldn't say the force, but the actual, what's causing that force is called dark matter. What do you want to call it when it's something where one, it's not visible, and two, it is, un, it's not, you can't see it, but it has, but it does affect gravity. What do you want to call something that affects gravity you can't see? <laughs> Uh, yeah. I think dark well, matter is a good name for it. <laughs> you know, why, why would you jump to the conclusion that gravity is correct? If you're observationally observing something that doesn't match your prediction, which is gravity, then you don't invent things. You don't say there must be something invisible there. Well, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Do what, what, what do you mean by gravity? Uh, okay, yeah, what, not, we know gravity exists. Are you denying gravity? Sure. Okay. If you want to, if you if you're saying that we know something exists that so much, so strongly that when we see things happening. Uh, hundreds of millions of miles, hundreds of trillions of miles away, when we see things happening that far away and we say, well, we know that gravity exists and we know exactly how it works, so therefore there must be invisible things well, out wait, there. Well, do, wait, do, 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 do you agree that gravity exists? If you're talking about the force that uh, 
you know, holds this to the earth. You can call that gravity if you want, sure. Okay, and what gra produces gravity? Uh, it, and to me, it would be weight. It would be... No, weight, you know, weight is a product of mass in a, in a, in a think, gravitational never field. Been, never, sure, you, you think that because you've been taught that. That's, that's physics. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, that's, that's not what I think. That's what I know. That's been taught. It's, yeah, it's been tested. Yeah, we can. can we understand it. how weight works. Weight is a factor of mass in a, in, a, in a gravitational hey, field. How do you know that? Actually, a very, a very. Okay. There's a very simple experiment you can do, Jaron. Okay. Go ahead. Um, you you take a scale, and you take a, a standard weight, like 500 uh, grams, for example, right? Okay. Set it on there. You, you, uh, cal you uh, configure your scale, or what's the word I'm looking for? Not configure, but you calibrate your scale, right, to where it's exactly 500 grams. Then you go to a higher or lower latitude, and don't recalibrate your scale. Put that same weight on that scale, and it will not be 500 grams. Correct. It will not weigh 500 grams because the air is either thinner or thicker. Than it has it nothing to do with the air. No. Yeah, so the gravitational to do with field. Air. Okay. You can do it in a vacuum. You could you could set up a little vacuum chamber, bring it in a vacuum, and that weight will weigh a different amount. Yeah. Have you ever heard and of the formula? Or, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that's because when you when you go further north, there's less. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Centripetal force. Is it centripetal or centrifugal? Centri centrifugal is the one that goes away. Centripetal is the one that comes close to you. The, the one of them so is a fictitious force. The other one's not. Yeah, it's, they're 180 degrees there's out. There's less of, force acting. Yeah. There's less force acting on you because you're you're not spinning as fast. You know, you're not you're not rotating as fast as, uh, around the Earth. Yeah, and you can do that experiment yourself, and and see that that does in fact happen. Yeah, uh, there's there's just two okay. counter forces when you like you're rotating something around. Centripetal is what's pulling it into you, and then centrifugal is the opposite of that. But anyways, real quick. So uh, have you have you ever heard the formula F equals m a? It's a very very simple formula. Force equals mass times acceleration. Yep. Okay. Um, weight is basically a in that case. Weight is the acceleration. It's the force of of, of mass under in a gravitational field. So that's all that weight is. It's, it's literally force equals ma. We know force equals ma is a real thing. We know we can take the mass of something. We can times it by the acceleration. We'll get the force. That's what weight is. Is weight is just a in that equation. So weight is not gravity. Weight is the effect, as Stanley pointed out, of mass in various gravitational fields. You take a a one you know kilogram. Uh, thing you put it on the Earth, it's going to weigh something. You put it on the Moon, it's going to weigh something else. It's going to put it on Jupiter, it's going to weigh something else. The mass has not changed. The mass is constant, right? But the mm -hmm. force it ex exerts is going to be changing because of the different types of gravity. That's something we observe. Yeah. That's something we've done. We know that that's not even controversial. It doesn't need to be controversial. It, it wouldn't be controversial if it's taught to everyone. In school books, and then those people who read no, <laughs> but not, that's not what he means. That's, that's not what he means. Not controversial. I, I'm not jumping. Not, not just controversial. Go ahead. Let let let, let Jaren yeah. finish. Finish. Hey, one sec. Go, okay, what, go ahead. Yeah, please, Jaren. What? I'm purposely not talking over you guys when you talk. Yeah, yeah. I'm no, I, I agree. Talk. Go ahead. So I just said that that's what's in school books, and that's what people who go to school and do well they can repeat that really well. They become the teachers, professors who teach it again. So I'm just saying because that's the case doesn't make that true because you think people have been to the moon doesn't mean we know what things weigh on the moon yeah it, oh. it just, it's uh, let me let me correct something right I, 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 I said this wrong I weight is not a weight is actually the force a is actually G G is actually the, the acceleration so it's actually F equals M a weight is actually uh, mass times G so weight is the force because of mass in a gravitational field so G is a in that equation oh, W I misspoke I'm sorry I actually right. have a video so on this, so I do know. I did, I did, I have. I, I know what I'm talking about. This I do actually actually have a phys, actual physics video on this. I just misspoke, so my, my so bad. You just said weight is is G. Is the force? Yeah. Right. W w no, well, weight weight is, F. weight is F. Weight is the force, right? So your force times mass equals acceler force equals mass times acceleration. So weight is mass times gravity. Well, gravitational force. Right. So it's the same. It's always the same. I mean, no, gravity, weight changes because of G. W equals mg. Okay. Mass is the same. If you do quantitative analysis, W equals mg. If m is constant, if g goes up, weight has to go up. If g goes down, W has to go down. That's called quantitative right. analysis. Okay. So it's, I mean, it's really a, it's just a, a place setter, place placement. It, it's just a, a what do you call it? A, a place taker. What is g? It called? No, g is a gravitational constant. 
But what I mean, it's not. It, it is directly associated with the mass. It's exact. It's, it's, it's proportional to the mass. Weight is proportional, proportional to the mass times. The, it's the product of mass times g. Okay. And g, g, g changes. In, the, in, the, in that case, though, it's it's the acceleration due to the gravity. It's not the so constant. When right? you asked me what gravity. Yeah, is, yeah, that's true. It's acceleration due to weight. gravity. It's not really a constant. So true. If I would have said, uh, if you would ask me what is gravity, I would have said weight times g. That would have been correct. It, it, weight times g? No, mass times g oh. is weight. Mass times g. Yeah. Well, mass times g. G is gravity, so it's mass times gravity equals weight. Okay. Okay. So if you have, a, so if you, if we agree that the mass is constant, a kilogram is a kilogram, right? That doesn't change no matter where you are. If g changes, right? That accelerational force if that changes, then w has to change as well, right? Correct. Okay, so a one kilogram is going to weigh more on Jupiter because Jupiter has more gravity than the Earth. Right. So it will weigh more. G goes up, exactly. W goes up. And again, I'm saying that I don't disagree with those things theoretically. If the moon is a place that we can go to and it is the size that they say it is and that gravity works the way we say it is, I'm not arguing that then we would weigh one sixth our weight on the moon. I'm not going to argue that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we don't know that those things are facts to be just going around telling people that they're facts. If that was a well, fact, then the people on the moon would have jumped ten to fifteen feet high, easily. They would have jumped. No, over gravity the on the moon is like one sixth that. You still have you still have things like inertia. You still have momentum. Things don't okay. all of a sudden just like stop existing because you're on the moon. Moon has gravity. Oh, okay. You know, just so like you're two hundred pounds, right? That's yeah. what I weigh. So. <sighs> but they're not. They're two hundred pounds plus a three hundred pound spacesuit. Wait, their their suit weighs three hundred pounds? I'm pretty sure. Mm, I don't think no. it was that much, was it? Okay. So they, on Earth, when they wore them, they weighed 500 pounds. No, they're back. Well, it might be. It might be that they were 300 pounds total. Okay. Yeah, so I would say it's more about 100 pounds. That probably sounds about right. But I mean, I always look it up. But I think it's kind of irrelevant. So um, the fact. The fact is that you. Go ahead. What's one six of 300 pounds? 50, right? 50. Yeah, 50 times. So you're 50 times six is 300. Pounds. Yeah. Okay, you're you're talking about weighing 50 pounds and having the muscle mass that you have on Earth. And you don't uh, think you'd be able to jump 10 or 15 feet high? Yeah, they weigh. Be able to jump over the rover? No, because they weighed <laughs> the pound. The suit weighed 180 pounds. The total. Um, 180 pounds. Yeah, the, the subtle suit? the subtle suit weighed 310 pounds, including life support. The suit weighed about 110 pounds, and their astronauts were 175. So they were about 485 pound total in complete suit. Oh, do your math again. Do your math again. I'm just reading What's it right now. The Apollo suit, including the life support backpack, weighed 180 pounds. The shuttle suit, including the life support system, weighs about 310 pounds. The suit itself weighs about 110 pounds. If an astronaut weighing, weighing 175 pounds wears the complete suit, the total weight is about 485 pounds. 310 plus 175 equals 495. No, that's not what they wore on the moon. Well, it's still a pretty heavy system. I mean, even even if space suit is still going to be a couple hundred pounds, or at least at least 100 some odd pounds minimum. Um, I mean, I. I I don't, I don't know where this is leading to because the fact is you keep on well, saying the that, that there's what we would have seen on people on the moon well, we didn't see. That's well, how, how much how much true. do you think they weigh on the moon? They weighed 50 pounds. 300 pounds. They weighed 200 pounds or let's say 170. Their okay, but here but here, here's also the problem. Do you understand that even though they 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 weigh less, they still have the same amount of mass. They still have that they still have that heavy amount of mass on them. I mean, they still sure. so they still have momentum. They still have to overcome inertia, right? In other words, if I get if I if I struck you with something that was fifty pounds in space, even though it's very light, it's going to hurt you just like it would fifty pounds on Earth, because yeah. you have it has momentum, right? You still have an impact, so you still have to take all these things into account. You, it, you're not going to just jump off the moon and fly into space because it's one sixth the gravity. I didn't, I didn't say that. I said that they'd be able to jump over the rover. That's what I said. Yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's correct. I haven't done the math on it, but. I'm sure George in the live chat could do the math on that, but I, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> okay. What you just said about momentum, I mean, that, that you still have to accelerate the, uh, the mass, and it still pushes right. against you. Would you be right. able to accelerate faster with that amount of mass. Yeah, how are you going to gonna exactly? To fast. How, well, what are you going to, how are you, you going to part enough energy from your, like, to jump to accelerate yourself enough to, to jump over a rover? Because your muscle mass is the same as it is on Earth, so if I can run and jump over a red wagon today, if there was one sixth the gravity, then I'd be able to jump over something 
probably six times bigger than the red wagon. No, it's not a linear. It's not yeah, a linear. I don't I think so either. I'm not giving you an exact, but I'm saying that your muscle mass is more, so you're able to propel yourself faster. You have less resistance. I think it's an interesting question, but I don't, uh, I don't know the math on it. I haven't done it. <laughs> well, I mean, that, I'm just, I don't know where we got onto that, but I was just saying that that's the kind of thing that you know uh, made me say we didn't go to the moon. Simple. When you watch what they're doing on the moon, it is a slowed down video. It's not reality. It's not somebody. Yeah, I mean, I've seen those conspiracy theories. I've also seen the debunk videos. Yeah. What are the debunk videos? Why are they not moving faster? Wouldn't they move faster on the moon? Mm, Why are they what do you mean move faster? faster? Yeah, what do you mean by move faster? Uh, on Earth, we have a resistance to our movement. If I go to take off and run, I've got my the gravity, my weight. Yeah. I've got uh, air resistance. Okay, on the moon, all those things are reduced. I have less gravity, well, less you, weight. You're I still less. not thinking about. Let's think about. Let's think about the, um, the the tangent, or let's think about the horizontal, right? So whenever whenever I push a medicine ball away from me, right, a, a fifty pound medicine ball away from me, on Earth, right, I'm not fighting gravity. I'm fighting gravity to hold it up, but pushing it away from me, I'm not fighting gravity. You're st it's still going to take you that same type of force. To push that medicine ball horizontally on the moon, and that's what you, that, I think. That's what you're not grasping is that you still have to, you still have momentum, you still have this, you still have to accelerate the same amount of mass. Exactly. Yeah, through less resistance. Well, less Invertible. resistance is not going to. It's, it's not, like I said, it's not a linear thing, and less resistance is not going to overcome the fact that you have a large amount of mass that you've got to impart energy to to overcome it, uh, its inertia. You have to change so, a change a vector there. That that requires energy into this system. Okay, so okay, so if the, there's a car on the moon, a normal Honda Civic, and six people can pick up that car on Earth, could six people pick it up on the moon? Well, well yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's going to be weight. It's going to be weight. It's going to be, weight, it's gonna be it's, it's just like it's like you can pick something up in a weightless condition, but it's still that you still have to impart be energy to that system. You, you 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 still need the same amount of energy, or at least uh, enough energy, to overcome the initial inertia of a, a tendency of a body to stay in motion or to stay at rest. That that still is in play. Sure. You still ha you still have to overcome that initial but, propensity for something to stay at rest. It needs energy going to the system. Okay, so if six people are on Earth, they lift a car. I can I can find six people that can li lift a Honda Civic. That can happen on Earth. So if we went to the moon, would those six people be able to pick up the car? The answer is yes. yes. Would it be easier? The answer would be yes. So I don't know what you're arguing. You're trying to make it sound like, oh no, when we went to the moon, it would be, you'd still have to lift the car's mass, and so it would be the, no, it would be six times easier. It would weigh six times like that's, less. See, that's the thing you're arguing. It wouldn't be six times easier. Okay, then three times easier. I don't, I don't even know why it would be. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know why you're getting. I haven't, it. Done, haven't done the math on it. So I don't yeah, know. I don't know either. Mike says it's not linear, but I mean, if, if we if, if we can get somebody to do that, that's fine. Uh, we have a lot of people that actually do this kind of stuff in the live chat, and I've never done that particular equation, so I'm not going to speak on it. But so I'm uh, just asking, would it it's be definitely easier not. Or what's that? Would it be easier or harder? It would be easier, but you still have momentum. It would be easier. Yeah. Okay. But. So, I mean, have you ever done a, have you ever done something called a free body diagram? Ever heard of one? Yes, I know what it is. Okay, and that that's probably what you would have to do in this situation. You have to use a free body diagram, and it'll give you um, how much force you actually need to overcome the gravity of the moon, how much uh, force you're putting into the system. That's that's how these things are done. Okay. Uh, Steve, if you don't mind, I'd I'd like to redirect to yes. like more, more earthly observations because. Um, this is this is what tends to happen as we start talking about things that are easily denied. You know, like you've never been to the moon, so you don't know. Well, okay, you know, like, but from Earth you can see curvature of Earth. You can see evidence of the curvature of Earth from Earth. So you, we don't even really have to even talk about that. You know, we can we can stay focused on what the globe model predicts, what the observations actually show us, what the flat earth predicts and what the observations show us and compare, you know, flat earth versus observations and globe earth versus observations. Observations, Jaren, and those observations are predicted by the globe and they're not predicted by any other model. Mm. My question is, if you have no other model that makes the predictions of the observations that we see, then what rational reasons do you have to believe 
that a flat Earth model is correct. Because there's enough wrong with the the globe model, in my opinion, that calls into question everything around it. When it's just simply a um, what I would call a metaphysical belief, it is a uh, irrational belief. It goes against my senses. It goes against um, what I see. So, is there reason to uh, to pay attention to it? Sure. You know, we were we were taught it in school. We were uh, everybody believes it. So you look at it and you say, well, this must be true. Everybody believes it. So it's got to be true. That's how I lived for 35 years. So I was just the same as you. I went to school like you guys. I uh, I accepted what I was taught, and that was it. But then when it got to a point where I started looking into it, looking into some things, I expected it to be readily apparent that these things were facts. And when I started looking in, I found one thing after another that didn't meet my observations. And then to see you guys flat out deny that what we're seeing and what we're saying is true. For instance, the whole idea of you can see a boat come back when it's gone over the curb. And people say, that doesn't happen. It's not happening. It's, it's, it's hilarious to hear. And it's just more evidence of why we continue to search. Because I've done it myself. When you go out and watch a boat disappear with your eyes, if you pull out a camera or a zoom lens and you zoom back in, the boat reappears. Now, eventually, it goes away. Eventually, it disappears. And it looks to be disappearing from the bottom up. But what we're saying is that by just looking at the observations, they match the globe model until you pull out your optics. All right, let me now get let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. Um, you're, you're, for one thing, I think you're confusing different things again. If a boat, and I was in the Navy, I've actually seen these things. Um, if a boat goes out of your line of sight, it may not be uh, go actually going over the horizon. It might just be too far for you to see. And then if you zoom in, you're going to only magnify what's existing there. So you're not seeing any more of that boat than what is actually being visible to you or being obscured by the horizon is not going to be visible to you. So it might just be something you cannot see. So when you zoom in, yes, you can see the boat, but you're only seeing the boat that's visible that you could see with the naked eye. If you, no, no, no. If, wait, let me finish. If, you, if the boat goes beyond the, the horizon and as part of it is obstructive, so you don't see the bottom, you can zoom in as much as you want. You're never going to see the bottom of that boat. Never. There's so much evidence let, of that is wrong. So let, much let me um, let me address this point. Make that well. statement. It's like you haven't done any research. You haven't looked at any videos. You haven't gone down. I've yourself. I've looked at quite a few of the videos, okay. and I've 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 okay. looked at Nathan let Oakley's. Let I've me, looked at uh, Sleeping Warriors. I've seen a lot. Uh, uh, Bob Skiba. Uh, I've I've gone through the two hundred things from Eric Dubai or Dubai. Yes, I'm familiar with these things. Or, that's not let, let me let me Go address ahead. this real quick. Yeah. So, you, for some reason, you guys focus on the boat example. So let's focus on a more okay. obvious example. I can see New Orleans from the North Shore, and it's clearly obstructed by the horizon with my eyes. And whenever I zoom in with my camera, the same percentage of obstruction is still there. So that completely invalidates that argument. Which is what, exactly what I just said, is it not? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you only have a certain amount of... View view that you can see distance wise with the naked eye now if you zoom in on that you'll see just a magnification of what's existing there that's already there you're not going to see any more of that object it's obscured by the horizon if however the boat is b below that horizon right so you'll have only the mast and the and the, the, the bottom of it is actually over that curve then no matter how much you zoom on it you will never see the bottom of that it's not possible there's not there's no photons originating from that object that's being able to reach your eyes being obstructive that's not what takes place, and that's what well, we're that's saying. Well, that's exactly what takes place. That's exactly what takes place. This is why you, you'll never come to the realization. You'll never see what we see because you refuse to look. You don't, you don't even question it because it, it calls into question everything you've ever believed in. So it, it's too much for you. It's I a, I've, I've, I've observed it. I mean, I, I don't know what there's to question. This is, this is standard basic stuff. I'll show you a, so if I show you a video where something falls behind the curvature, and then when we zoom in, it comes back into play, you're... I'll, I'll look at any of it. I look at all the debunk videos too, um, and I find the debunk videos to be extremely um, well thought out. They actually use actual science. They actually use oh, physics. I've never yet, I've never yet seen a flat Earth video that has ever gone and said, "I said, oh, well, you know what? We can't explain that. Not once. Not one of them whatsoever." No, of not. Yeah, of course not. There wouldn't be the globe wouldn't be the prevailing belief if there was things that uh, the globe hadn't have an answer for. It, it doesn't mean that that makes it true. It means it's had a lot of good people, a lot of quality, smart people that so use physics and science uh, to to explain it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's so. Exactly. Can so the boat going over the horizon video? Do we have physics and math to explain that? 
that we, people can look at or just a video saying, oh, look, here's the, this and that and that and somebody trying to explain it? Or do we actually have somebody going through it like Sally has done, like uh, Res Rhetoric does, that Sean Hufford does, that um, Sa uh, me, Sean not Sally, uh, Sky, Sp uh, Sly Sparkane does or any of these Flat Earth debunkers, they use actual science and maths and physics. So do you have a video that I can look at and I'll look at it later, I give you my word, I'm legit, people can tell you, you know, I, I when I, I try to be objective, although I am 100% in the, the globe earth model, but I will look at the evidence and try to debunk it myself. Um, do you have a, a video I'll watch later where a ship goes over the horizon exactly as you said, and you just zoom in on it, and all of a sudden you can see the whole ship again? It's and and the math and physics, physics that went into that, I'll look at it. What would be the math and the physics that would go into it? What do you, what do you mean? The earth is flat, that would be the math and physics. And that, how would you, you're not going to listen to that. There's nothing that could ever convince you because since you believe math and physics is is a fact that there's they can never change even though it's that's changed not my argument. No, I've never said that actually. What did you say? I've, well, I've never said anything that can change. Math is a mathematical construct construct that we that we make. I think I don't think we we discovered math. I think we invented math. But that's an age or argument in mathematics. I agree with you on that. Yeah. So uh, physics, however, can change. I mean, the laws of physics we don't, we 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 make the assumption that they are um, not not something that's going to change in the future. We believe that they are the same as the facts, it's called uniformity of nature. Uh, they might have changed in the initial conditions of the state of the universe early on during like the Planck era, but we don't know that. But I don't make this assumption that the laws of physics can never change. I make the assumption that they don't for the fact that we can make predictive abilities because we assume they don't change. But is it impossible? Okay. Well, no, it's possible well, they can change. You're, you're asking for somebody to do a, a breakdown of a video that we see something and then we don't see it. And you're saying you want it to be scientifically broken down. Do you understand that that would be somebody employing the same things you believe to then convince you of something that wouldn't no. work in that model? Oh, well, which, which me, video is he referring to, Sally? Maybe you, you may be able to, to shed, light, shed, shed okay, some light let, on this one. Let me let me let me uh, rephrase this real quick because I think what you think we think is not what we think. Maybe uh, that's true. So pull up the end of that video then. So so here's the thing: is that. I'm asking for a rational explanation of your observations. That's what I'm asking for. Now, there are different ways you can do that. You can use English, you can use German, or you, or you can use another language called mathematics. Mm -hmm. Mathematics is simply a language. It's a more robust language. It's a less ambiguous language, language that explains what you're seeing or explains observations that we see. True. So that's, that's what we're asking for. We're asking for a rational explanation of why a, a city will be obstructed by the horizon. The only rational explanation that we have currently is the globe model. There, there aren't any other models that make this prediction. And I, I can I share my screen? Yeah, um, yeah Steve? Sure. Let right, me get to so you one second there, buddy. Let me, um, let me show you this predictions compared to observations animation here. It, it's, it's, it might be a bit a bit lengthy, but um, can everybody see this in the live bad. feed, or I can blow this up larger if I need to. Um, we don't need the chat right now. I want to see this, so I'm going to blow this up larger, so everybody in the uh, outside can see this. Okay, go ahead. So this this is a model of a globe and of the Lake Punch Train Causeway that was produced by Walter Bisley. He's he's done these amazing models and these amazing animations. Uh, not just for the causeway, but for the transmission lines and for a few other things as well. Mm -hmm. But this is a model that's making predictions, right? It, it's this is take this is the same thing we're talking about with Stellarium. You take the math, you stick it into a model, then you can make predictions about what the real world observations should be, right? So can and, you rotate around to the side of that view? Um, I can't. I can't do that in this model now. This, this is a fixed um, uh, yeah, vantage this is point. Yeah, it's a fixed animation. Yeah, it's a fixed animation. Fixed, uh, but but what, he's, what he's done is he's taken his model and then he's, he's taken my observations and he's overlaid them on the model so that you can see how they match up. Now, what we do know for a fact is that this model is the shape of a globe. So we know that for a fact. So it's making predictions. So can you show and me? And I go out, I go out and make the observations. I've never and then seen we that before. No. Predictions. Hold on. Can you pull back and show me the? You said we know that this is on a globe. How do we know? Show me the, the globe. 
Well, we, we know it's on a globe because that is the model. And there are, I can show you some other uh, things that walk I mean, I mean, I use where, uh, where he has backed I'm up. Saying, Darren, are you saying, saying that he made this model on a flat earth model? I'm saying, I don't know what this is, but I see a blue line going straight across there. And okay. So oh, can you, can't you pull back so we can see the curve to a ball? Yeah, I, I will. I'm going to let this oh. animation finish real quick. And sure. I'll, sh I'll show you some of the other shots that uh, Walter has had. One of the things about this model is that it's, it's hard to move the camera. Um, just because it's the way it's designed. So you can like, zoom uh, in and out, but can, can you actually rotate it on this model? Yeah, I, there, you can pretty much do whatever you okay. want to do on it, but uh, there's, as far as these animations and as far as like moving around in three-dimensional space as you would expect to do in like a 3D CAD right. program, for example, the, it, it's, You're limited. It's, possible, it's possible, but it's just the tools aren't available. Right, on I got you. So he's, he's, he's obviously doing it, I mean, in, in his animations. But uh, the tools aren't really. But this this is a video that's a fixed video. You can't you can't change the. Uh, you're not using the program right now. You're just showing us a video, right? Right. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. I'm just, okay. I'm just pl I just played his animation. Right. Yeah. This is this is his animation, and uh, I got you. Let me let me skip a little bit ahead here. You can't you can do some things like skip ahead and stuff like that. This is Jesse Kozlowski's uh, observation of the. Uh, Causeway through with the auto light, and that the auto light is on the that's on the horizontal right there. And then uh, this is a model of my observation from the 15th floor of Three Lakeway Center. Let's see, I think he has the uh, image, yeah. And there's the image I took. So he took your image and made a model out of it, because you take a lot of these these images yeah. for that lake, yeah. Yeah, I have th literally thousands of images now. I mean it's it's a lot. Yeah, I but, mean, real um, quick, real quick. Let me ask Darren this for me on this particular thing. If this was a flat Earth model, um, why would there be a curve? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> Show me what p picture you're talking about. Um, like the last one he just had. Show me because I. There's clearly a, a curve in that um, in that bridge. <laughs> clearly. Who's talking, about, um, who's talking about this image here? So we we see in a circle. Back to it. We right? see in a we circle. See in a circle. You're the radius. Yeah, your 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 sight line is the radius of a circle, at all times. So if you're standing off to the side of this bridge, then you could get the appearance of what looks to be a curve. You certainly would not be able to see any curve on a ball Earth twenty four thousand nine hundred one miles. Well, the problem I have with that no, is well, this is not our well, eyes. This is the pic. We can actually there is actually a curve there. You can measure that amount of curve, and it has nothing to do with our eyesight. How are you measuring that amount of curve? Take a take any point of reference yeah, and and, and t take a linear line out. You can see a divergence from the line. A line is is any oh. a line is something between two points, right? Or a line segment is a line continues past okay. the two points and an infinite amount of points in it. But a line, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, you can take any two points in a plane and you can make a line out of it. And if it's okay. a divergence from that line, there's obviously a, a deviation. We can see a deviation from any from a point at the beginning of that picture to the to toward the middle or toward the end, and we can see there's a derivation from that line. It's a curve. It is. What else you want to call it? Uh, yeah, you call I, it you call well, it. let me let me let me just point this out. You, you you brought something up. This this is the prediction of the globe model. That's not a debatable fact. I mean, it that is the prediction. That's what we expect to see for this observation. Okay, so sh show me that. You're, you've said that now twice, and I'm just saying, show me that. Show you what? You're saying that the globe model predicts exactly what you're seeing here. I'm saying, how, how are you saying that? Because this is the model of a globe, and it is the model of a causeway on that globe. Yeah. That's what that is. Hey, real quick, do you, um, okay. I, I know this is between you guys and stuff, and I, 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 I'm doing myself, but... You're telling me to take, take your word for it. Can I can I bring in George if you don't mind? No, you don't have to take my word for it. You can come over here and download the uh, source code if you want to. Jaronism. Where's that? Jaron. He has he has. Real quick, can I can yes. I bring in George to this conversation? He um he has an offer for you that he would like to uh, propose. You know George, right? Oh, here it is, right here. No. Who? George George uh, Tech. I, I had never pronounced his last name, and he, he, I, I've told him this. Um, H N A T I U K I Hanutech. Hunut. I just call him George. There's a link right here under resources. You can get the source code. Right is, there. is that okay? Look at it for yourself. 
Sure, I, I don't know what you're asking me, but go ahead. I, I'm just bringing, I'm just allowing somebody else to come in, and he wants to sure, an offer. No problem. So he, he's legit. Did you Did you hear me, Jaron, about the uh, the link here? Yes, and so um, scroll down a little bit. So this then all the stuff for the globe is put is input in here. Is that how it works? Uh, he just built a, he just built the model, and we're just looking at it in three D view. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll go check that out. That looks amazing. Yeah, that's a lot of detail. And, um, that's just pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he's done a, he's done a bunch of stuff. He he did the uh, recent uh, SpaceX uh, launch, which uh, here's him overlaying one of the SpaceX pictures uh, from seven thousand kilometers uh, on top of his model, and then uh, uh, there's another one. Wait, same what? thing here from four thousand. So he's saying that the Tesla was seven thousand miles at that point. Seven thousand kilometers. Four thousand, yeah, seven seven thousand kilometers and four thousand kilometers. Okay, that's that's where it was. And where did he get that distance from? Well, that was the that was the published distance. That 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 scene appeared about a minute and a half after launch. So in a minute and a half, it went seven thousand kilometers. This right here is the published distance. You can you can find that. Yeah. Oh, uh, he says you have your. It was, um, out, it was out there, Jaren. Uh, I think Jaren is. I think you might have George blocked actually. Hmm. Let's see if it's a different account. Um, oh, on my channel, or he can't come on. You mean? Yeah, it's possible. Do you, do you block a lot of people? Uh, let's, uh, I don't, but I have a lot of moderators. What's the? Um, well, it wouldn't be that the, would be well moderator would only be of the chat mod. This is from um, G, G plus. You would have had to block him on G plus, not chat mod. Oh, I got a lot of uh, moderators too, but they they can't block on G plus. They can block on the uh, the live chat. I don't even use G plus, but I I do block people if they say something in a comment or something that's shouldn't okay. be said. So what 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 is his name? I can look it up. Um, George. Yeah, or George. Channel the, name? You have to go to his YouTube channel. Oh, excuse me. You have to go to his G plus okay. page and then block him from his G plus page. Um, Okay, maybe no one's searching. Uh, George, just paste it to him. George Hanock. Paste uh, it. I don't know. Oh. H N. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. I'm putting the outside George, chat for you. Okay. I don't see him. Yeah. I put in the outside right now for you. That's the channel name. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can find his Facebook or not. It's his G Plus page. And I, I'm not even sure you can unblock somebody once they're blocked and they can come in. You can unblock somebody. I don't know if you can do it in such that they can come in after. Does he know that they, would be, they couldn't do a hangout? Is he in the public chat? He is in the uh, live chat right now with the other 100 some odd people. I see him. Let me see. Well, I'm not seeing George. Send me a message. Oh, you see him? He's, he just said me. In the live chat. So I think if my moderators were to see a, a comment and then delete it, doesn't that block somebody? No, it only blocks them Haven't from the live no, chat. It doesn't block their your, Google Plus page. Your moderators are your moderators are <laughs> are uh, over aggressive as are mine. They they block people that disagree with you. Yeah, well, they, sh they shouldn't, but I mean, you know... I can yeah, it's hard, it's hard to get everybody, all moderators on page. I got a lot of moderators, too, but I think the vast majority of my moderators do an exceptional job, and, you know, I appreciate everything they do. And if they if they go overboard a little it's bit, it's easy yeah. fix, right? It's I don't I don't get on them for going a little overboard that much because, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, lot, it's a pain in the ass to, to moderate some of this stuff. Let's be realistic. Yeah. Um, I couldn't do it on my own, so I can't even pretend that I would be able to. So all right, I'll, I'll give you his blocked. page right there. I found his Google Plus page. I just put I'm, the outside I'm chat blocked. for you. He's already unblocked. Oh, he's already unblocked. All right. The interesting thing about Walter's models is that uh, he has a whole bunch of different observations, not just my stuff. And he compares, you know. Is that like stuff been up for a while? Yeah, it's been up for a while, yeah. I can send you a link if you want it. No, I, I, think, I think I've seen it before. I just um, was not putting it all together, but now I'm recognizing some of that. Yeah. That bottom part of the page. Yeah, I mean this. I mean, if you look at if you look at everything that he has here, he has a little tensions by you observation I made. Uh, Hold on, let me get back. I don't know. I don't know about Grace. I, I don't know what this one is. Some oil platform. 
Oh, that's the Santa, uh, Bo's, Bo's observations down Sandy, uh, Santa Barbara. And then you have Chicago and Canigo. How, how do you pronounce that? Okay, so go to Canigal. Go to go to Chicago. I just want to see what the what this is showing. Okay, so this is flat Earth and globe Earth, and this is like a video that's playing here. Yeah, all, the, all these are animations. These right here. There we go. Oh, okay. Let me just watch this one for a second, I'm trying to see here. What is he saying on the globe? Chicago disappeared behind the first river. So then, right, zooming in doesn't bring back. So what is it showing here? Let's climb a nearby hill, 200 meters. Okay, time out, pause right there. So you're telling me that but when you climb a hill for 200 meters, the horizon drops uh, 4,000 feet. No, this is not a model. Like, like I said, like I said, this is a globe model. It's not a globe model because he just said we. Well, went up, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on. Listen to me, because he said we went up 200 meters. That's 600 feet. In 600 feet, the eye level line dropped from where it is on the flat Earth to three times the height of those buildings. That's that means 6,000 feet. The horizon dropped. That's not reality, dude. It didn't drop. It didn't drop six thousand feet. These buildings aren't six thousand feet. They're two thousand. So it dropped four thousand feet. It, it didn't drop four thousand feet. It dropped less than the building height. Look where the eye level is up there. They yeah. had to drop all the way down from that horizon line. Back up. And drop from there. Okay. So where would the building be? It's below. It's below okay. the horizon. Okay. And then watch the horizon line. Like, well, we can actually grab this right here and you can play with it. See when the buildings start becoming visible. 18 oh, meters. 52 meters. 160 meters. Okay, but look at how low the horizon line is dropping. Yes, and? The horizon line doesn't drop like that. But it does. That's, what? See, this, is, this is the reoccurring problem that we have, is that you, you guys don't understand the the model. You don't understand the actual globe model, like what it actually predicts. Because it doesn't it doesn't show what reality is. If I went up to a hill that's two hundred feet, the horizon line would not drop that far off of the horizon line when I was okay. at ground level. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm going to do it one more time. So I hope it sticks this time. Okay. This is a globe model. That's what it is. That's not debatable. That this is a globe. I mean, Jaron, real quick, do you do you, you accept that globe. that's a globe model? I mean, do you think they use any other model? Do you think they use a tetrahedral model, a conic model, a uh, or if you want to go Lord no. Stephen Christ, a uh, inverse cubed cellular phone, whatever thing he <laughs> promotes, cellular Actually, model. The, the, the globe is more. The globe is more likely to be true than than the concave Earth. Oh, okay, well that's, that's a plus. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> progress. I mean, there's a little step in the right direction, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm baby here, steps, man. I'm saying that if we went up 600 feet, or whatever he's saying there, that the horizon doesn't drop that much because we know it only drops of what a degree or two if you're up 35,000 feet. That so will, how, again, this is this comes down to focal length because the the focal length is 800 millimeters. So this isn't going to be large amounts of degrees. Got you. Okay, so that's kind of what I was saying. So we need to pull that back to maybe what our eyes would see then. What eyes would see would be about 50 millimeters. Okay, I feel better now. I was trying, you were showing that horizon line dropping that much. I was like, that's ridiculous. Now, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's the same problem that I have with this observation here. This observation's at 2,000 millimeters. I mean, you know, it's... And so what if you pull people, that back? People don't understand that. If you pull this back, it, you, you can't even see that. You know, this is what you would see with your eyes, and then this is what you would see, like with a typical drone, you're talking. Okay, so do you think you've been forthcoming on that fact to people? Yes, absolutely, I've been forthcoming on that. What do you mean? Okay. Well, I mean, it's because again, we just, the reason we got into this conversation earlier is you and I talking about the fact that zoom lenses and telescopes are a photo of reality. I said they just were relationships, they are. and you didn't agree. Agree, because they, they are reality. That if if you if this was like super high resolution, like a I don't know, two thousand megapixel image, mm -hmm. you would you would be able to crop it and still see this exact same thing right here. The the zoom doesn't change the the image. 
It just right. magnifies it. That's all it does. Right. So, but that, that that changes the relationship between items. For instance, I could find a, a telephoto picture of like a mailbox behind a car, and they would look like they are right behind each other, but in reality, they might be uh, 200 yards away. But that doesn't it doesn't change the relationship. The zoom lens has no has even though that it's called I know what you're talking about. You're referencing lens compression. It's called lens compression, but it's a misnomer. It's not actually lens compression. The lens doesn't do any compressing. It's perspective compression. Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to say is if you if you had a two thousand megapixel image of this oh, right here. So I want to know why my answer is wrong. When you asked me why there was a curve and I said perspective, and you you guys laughed at that or whatever. But now you just said that the photo actually makes a perspective change. So really, when you ask me why is there a curve in this photo, and I say perspective, that's exactly why there's a curve in that photo. No. Oh. The, the photo doesn't actually create the, the perspective compression doesn't create the curve. That, that, that's, it, just, and that's, it just fits it inside of a frame. Exactly. And Red's Rhetoric has a really good video on this. Have you seen Red's Rhetoric video with the chess pieces on the top, on the top of the car? Exactly what Stanley said. The, the compression, the perspective compression does not give it the curve. The curve exists. But the, you're going to see it from different perspectives. And one, in one angle, you go see that that you can see it's actually curved because the car hood, or the, excuse me, the car top is curved. In this case, the planet is curved. And then from another angle, it looks more linear. That's that's what they're talking about. It doesn't change the fact that the actual curvature exists, right, Stanley? Right. Because the, because the compressed the, perspective the curve, or the, the curve, perspective, the perspective compression there. doesn't create the curve. The, the per, yeah, the perspective compression. All it does is just fits more miles worth of distance into a, uh, a fewer pixels so that you can actually see it in a single frame but it doesn't it doesn't create the curve i mean perspective in general can't create curves i mean it, it, that that doesn't make any sense the perspective maintains straight lines uh, i mean something could um, probably be be look more it'll look more linear on perspective than, than a curve i don't know how it, something that's linear would look really kind of curve like this though by just changing your perspective i mean I, you, do you do you deny there's a curve there or you do you think that bridge is absolutely flat and straight Darren? well the bridge itself has undulations no we're not talking about variations or undulations we're talking about is that is is that bridge uh constant on the x-axis no it goes up and down i just they said that the, the water the water is constant on the x-axis well, they, they kind of go. Well, it's really not. The x-axis does. I mean, it. If you start from a, a single origin point on the x-axis, you can actually see it goes below that. And I think the video that Stanley showed clearly showed it went below the uh, x-axis as a reference. And by the way, Dim Sum, thank you for the two dollars super chat, Canadian. Uh, Jaron, did you admit your senses were full? I I don't know what he means by that, but I will ask it. Jaron, did you admit that your senses were full? When? Uh, I guess just now. Uh, yeah, our senses are fooled sometimes, but uh, usually it means that it's some sort of deception in some way. They're usually, your senses keep you alive every day, all day. If it wasn't for your senses, you would be dead. That's so, it. What? Go ahead. I didn't oh. mean to interrupt you. No, I was just saying, so your, your senses in all areas have to constantly work. That's what's amazing about them is that they are great. And if somebody sets up some sort of deception, like a, um, I don't know, a, tr a trick of uh, illusion, you know, one of those tricks that you can find on a website or something that says, stare at this green dot and it'll disappear and stare at this pink dot and it will make a little circle, whatever. Those things are purposely set up to fool your senses. That's the point of them. That's why somebody made them. That's why they ended up on a website that says illusions. Um, otherwise, your senses are always exactly what you need to get by. Sure. But I think he's talking. He's talking about the car analogy. He just mentioned that. So he's saying that on the car analogy, you can see there's definitely a curvature of the car top, and therefore the the chess pieces will follow that natural curvature, and you'll see the curve. But from a different perspective, it looks more linear. That that's fine. That's a perspective compression that does happen. What we're saying here, though, is let's say let's say you took like a laser beam. You agree a laser beam is linear, correct? I mean, very little divergence. And let's assume that for the most part, for this experiment, you can go several several miles with a laser, and it's it's going to be a straight line. Okay. So I if I start a, if I just point a laser from an initial point on that bridge, would that what you see as curvature in the bridge go below that that laser? Would you actually see it diverge from the, the path of the laser, or would it be stay no. parallel with it? 
the laser would stay completely flat and level. Would the bridge That's be parallel that... at all points to that laser? No, not at all points. The bridge goes up and down. I don't know how many times i got to say that. Assuming there was no so, bridge movement. So let's, let's ignore the bridge for a second and just look at this water line right here that goes along the base of the, of the bridge, and that water line is curved. No. Yeah, it is. Okay, well, I'm telling you it's straight. So, I mean... It's, well, you can you can hold a straight edge to it, and we can figure out who's right then. Well, you're you're looking at a at a photograph. That's not if you, you need to go out there and actually measure. You can't just look at a photograph and say oh, it's a straight line, so therefore it's straight. But you are saying you, you are saying that the bridge can, is normally hold straight. On, though. Hold on a second. Go you ahead. can look at a photograph and take measurements. That's how theodolites work. Okay, and exactly why I say a theodolite is a two D picture representation. It's a picture plane of reality. It's not reality. That's it's. It, it, Ridiculous it's measure, it's measuring angles, and the angles are in reality there. I mean, I, sure, you can you're looking that. at reality. If you, if you can't if you can't use a theodolite and you can't use a telescope, then you can't use your eyes either. I mean, your eyes are just simply a lens, just like those things. Uh, yeah, but it's the best camera. I mean, it's better than any camera there is. Your and eyes are better. It doesn't have a telephoto lens on it. Okay, but as far as uh, you know, total viewing area, it's ten times better. Okay, but it, it, completely irrelevant. Okay, well, you just said that if we we can't use our eyes, I'm saying our eyes work well; they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Cameras and, can, and so do telescopes and cameras. Right, and we should recognize that, like, when things reduce in size in the distance, that you have to tell a telescope that that's what's going to happen in reality because the telescope doesn't know that. The telescope has no way of knowing that. So if you the telescope like, doesn't know anything, the right, telescope exactly. is a passive receiver, just like your eyeball. It right. just receives the light. Okay, so do, do, do we recognize that things in the distance are smaller than they would be if they were close to us? Of course. Okay, so the telescope does not know that. Therefore, you just admitted that we need to tell the telescope that things get smaller because it doesn't know that. I, I don't tell my telescope anything. I just take a picture. Right, and when you level a telescope and you look off in the distance, and then when things drop off the hairline to say that's curvature is ridiculous. You didn't tell the telescope that things are dropping in the distance. I don't need to tell a telescope that things are dropping in the distance. That's what we're observing in reality. But the telescope doesn't know that things get smaller in the distance. It thinks everything's level for all ways and all time. The, the telescope doesn't have to know that. What it doesn't even what you're saying doesn't even make sense. Okay. If I took a laser, like we were talking about a laser earlier. I've if, already I took, if, if I took a laser and I shined it, right? It the laser is basically just a high power to, uh, flashlight. I mean, that's all it is from from a far distance. Well, the light's a little okay. it's polarized a and stuff, but it's... And that it's, light, it's, yeah, it's, pol okay, polarized light, yeah. but that light had this... It's going to be affected by the atmosphere the same way as all other light coming from that direction. It's not going to not be affected. It's light, just like any other light reflected or being shine out, uh, shown out of a flashlight or out of a, a, a street light or whatever. It's just... It's still going to be affected by the <clears> atmosphere. <throat> Okay, so, so what I've said it to Jesse, and make any sense. this is what I still am trying to figure out a way that we can do this test, because I've said this to Jesse, and this would be a telling thing for me, is if we were to take his observation of the Comcast building from Apple Pie Hill, he's 250 feet high, he's looking at a building 1,000 feet high, and he shows his crosshairs are hitting the building up around seven or 800 feet, and he says that the distance that the, the difference between the distance that the crosshairs should be hitting at 250 and them hitting at 750 is the curvature of Earth. And what I'm saying is, no, you if you think that your telescope leveled at 250 feet would hit the building at 250 feet off in the distance, then you have not you don't understand how perspective works. The building is smaller in the distance. Therefore, if you put a laser on top of your telescope, so you've now attached a laser directly on top of the telescope, you're pointing the, the tel the telescope off into the distance, that laser line would come down past the the crosshairs of the telescope. Okay, the, because the because the laser would hit at 250, but the telescope would not. So there is light being reflected off that building, and it's traveling towards you. And let's let's just assume that there's no atmospheric re uh, uh, refraction going on for the sake of this argument. And if I took a laser and I shown it parallel to that beam of light that's coming off the building. They're going to stay parallel. They won't cross by the definition of parallel lines. Correct. That's what's going to happen. And you were talking about the, the, the curvature of the water line. 
here is another picture. Maybe it's a little bit more apparent to you that the water line is in fact curving. Absolutely not. I've got a video that will that will show you that you're wrong. Okay, speaking I mean, about that um, real quick, this is a perfect time for George to make his little offer to you real quick. And by the way, there's another $5 super chat. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I'm not going to, I'll read it as is. Um, no offense, with all due respect, has Jaron finished high school? And I think he's just kind of asking Jaron, I'm, and I'm not trying to dog you. I'm really not. I really hate this. Oh, well, you may not have an education in this or that, but I am kind of curious. I mean, do you have any um, coursework in physics or math or anything like that? I'm just, and I'm just asking because I'm just kind of curious of where you, you're. It's a high school, just a high school education. Okay. And okay. then about a couple of weeks of college, I was at. Appreciate it. Okay. Here, here's another example. This is one mile to eight miles out, and this water line is clearly curving. Hold on. I went away from your view, so I'm not seeing what you're showing. One second. Let me get this, is the, this is the 1.2 mile marker right here. So 1.2 miles, and this uh, fender system out here is eight miles away. So this is seven miles worth of curvature you're looking at right here. Oh, of course, the horizon the horizon's closer than seven <laughs> miles, so you're actually seeing a, an obstruction there. Hold on one second. Then I'll get back over there. Oh, uh, yeah, this one. And then I'm, I'm going to send you this video into the uh, Hangouts chat. And if you just go to, like, uh, I don't know, five, five and a half minutes, that's what I'm talking about there. Okay, there. In here. Okay, this is in the chat, and then let me see what you're looking at. Oh. Okay. This is 1.2 mile marker. Okay. The spinner system's eight miles away. The horizon's clearly like in front of it, but this line right here is curving. So what about, so what are you saying? That the water went level on the wall here until that little break point and then it started curving up? No, the, this, the, the bridge is coming in at an angle here. And then right here, from here, this at this one one point two mile marker, all the way out to eight miles is perfectly straight. The bridge. Okay, so if you bring so up this water line is curving. It's not even to the street. Okay, well. Okay, well, real, real quick, let's get George in here real quick can, if, we, if you, we can. You can just you can just deny you can just deny it if you want, but we not, can't really work past that. I mean, okay. that's a curve. That's a curved line. It's not a straight line. Sure, and you can call it curved if you want, just the same as I'm going to deny it. And I have a video here showing you why it's why I feel that way. That, that's. <clears throat> All I can give you is my evidence and my reasons for why I believe what I believe, and you can give me your reasons and your evidence for why you believe what you believe. Let's let's try this one one more way, okay? Let's try this one more way. I want to try and do something here. Okay. Rather than just show the video, I keep saying is evidence against what you're showing. You'd rather just. No, I'll be. You, you can something. share your screen and show it. It's fine. Just let me uh, just let me finish doing this, and then we can go on from there. Okay, let's get George in here. George, you're there. And by the way, uh, thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the kind words in the live feed. Um, I do try to get live entertaining guests. Um, I do try to get interesting conversations. That's what I want this channel to be known for. I also want uh, people to, to be aware of our podcast out there, The Non Sequitur Show, which we're having amazing guests come on. We had Seth Andrews from The Thinking Atheist. We had Arn Ra. Um, that'll be out tomorrow. Uh, we had a little teaser out today on that. We have uh, so many people we've already interviewed. We were booked till March. Uh, we're just releasing them like one a week. Maybe maybe we'll step it up to two. But I do appreciate all the kind words um, for the fact that we are trying to put forth interesting conversations, pe things that people do want to listen to, and the fact that this channel will be somewhere people can come in and actually have conversations and not be censored. Of course, there are limitations, uh, but I mean, if somebody's polite and somebody's uh, having a, an actual conversation like Darrenism is, I welcome that. Whether I disagree with them or agree with them, it doesn't matter. I want to see if people can have honest discourse or at least intelligent discourse uh, or something that's entertaining. So, you know, pick one. Uh, you know, I don't know where Darrenism falls into some people, but, you know, it's, it's, it's the fact that he is actually able to communicate and articulate his points, maybe... Maybe not as effectively as I would hope as far as a flat earther, because I, I don't understand the words he's using in that way. But that's just maybe a disconnect that I'm having with him. But I appreciate the fact that Jaron takes the time to come in here and have these conversations. And that's what I want people to do with my channel, have conversations. So I appreciate all the kind words. Uh, I, I know there's other things out there people go watching. And so when they decide to come here and watch, it's, it's, it's cool. I, I really do appreciate it. It shows that uh, people are interested in having these types of conversations rather than drama and trolling. Uh, you know what? There's other channels for drama. There's other channels for trolling. I'm not interested in that. There's just not my thing anymore. So I want to thank Jaronism and I want to thank everybody else for that. So 
Real quick, uh, one more super chat. Sharon prefers videos over critical thought. Uh, I don't know. That's from Michael. I, I I don't know. I I I, I don't know what Jaronism's thought processes is. We can get into that a little bit, but uh, let's get George in here real quick. George, you wanted to say something to uh, Jaron, correct? George, you have to unmute yourself, George. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Am I coming? Through? Yeah. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Been a while. Yeah. How are you doing there, Steve? I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah, it has. Uh, Jaron, mm. uh, getting back to uh, something that was discussed earlier about uh, objects being hidden beyond uh, the curve of the Earth or uh, boats coming back uh, into view uh, by zooming with an appropriate telescope or uh, P900 camera, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen most of these and what is going on here, uh, in my opinion anyway, and I'm pretty sure it's correct, is that any of these videos that are showing that sort of thing occurring is uh, inevitably what I see is an object like a boat gone, disappeared out of view because of maybe atmospheric uh, haze, um, the fact that there isn't any clear viewing, and then uh, they focus in with a, a camera like the P900 or a telescope and bring it back into view. And all that is saying is that that object, that boat, whatever, um, did not go beyond the curve of the Earth. Because um, if had it gone beyond the horizon line, beyond being hidden by the curve, there'd be no way you could bring it back. Right. Now, I have a situation here on the Canadian border of Minnesota. We're on a very big lake called Rainy Lake. Mm -hmm. There are sections of this lake where we have 20 miles of unobstructed view, that's 32 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And I perform a lot of tests and experiments out in front of the lake and uh, on my home and place here called Sand Bay where I have basically seven miles of unobstructed view, but there are sections of the lake where we can get a good 20 miles. We don't have to use that, but I offer you or anyone, uh, any group of people that might want to come up here. And uh, if you don't want to do, if you could find a representative or a group of representatives that you trust, um, we have are uh, good 25 inches of ice on the lake right now. It's easy to get around by snowmobile and about a month from now, as the sun gets higher in the sky, the snow will be getting burnt off the surface of the uh, ice and we'll be able to travel around with an automobile anywhere we want to go. And it's very easy to get around on the lake. What's the name of the lake? Things up, pardon? What's the name of the lake? Rainy Lake, R A. I N Y Lake. Mm -hmm. It's uh, about 70 miles east of the northwest angle, the little tit that's on the top of Minnesota, about 70 miles east. Um, it's between the um, boundary canoe waters uh, that are just a little bit west of Lake Superior. But it's a very big lake. You'll 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 see that there's two lakes in this region. Uh, One's called Rainy Lake, and the other's Lake Captogama. And uh, we have about 360 square miles of uh, surface area on the lake here. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> Wait, is it by Lake Superior or no? No, we're about 50, uh, 250. No, let's see. I'd say about 150 miles uh, west of Lake Superior. Uh, lake Superior isn't a place you'd want to be trying to do the test because very seldom does Lake Superior ever freeze over. Yeah, it's I see Rainy Lake. It just it looks like it's um, like real choppy. You say there's an area that is choppy. 20 miles unobstructed? Well, I mean, on Google Earth, I'm looking at it. It looks like well, it's, it, it's filled with islands. There's about 10,000 islands in the lake. But there are sections where we can get an unobstructed view up to 20 miles. There's two arms to the leg, the one that goes north into Canada right. and one east arm that goes, uh, uh, well, the arm that goes east. And the arm that goes east goes 40 miles from International Falls, Minnesota. Uh, but there's two sections to the east ar uh, arm. There's one that goes 20 miles to what we call the Bruin Narrows. 
and then it opens up for another 20 miles, which heads out towards Kettle Falls in the east. But anyway, long story short, is we can get a good un unobstructed view. So what my proposal is that if you or anybody would like to come up here, um, we can set up a test, say take a snowmobile, mount a 20 foot uh, pole to it, like a 20 foot two by four, put three targets on it, say at six feet high, mm -hmm. 10, uh, 12 foot high, 18 foot high, and say, uh, mount, I have several uh, surveying tripods. We can mount a tripod out on the ice so that uh, your telescope or whatever you want to use for viewing is exactly six feet above the ice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can go out and say, take the snowmobile out. Uh, let's just say we don't have to go 20 miles. We could just go uh, 12 miles out. So at six feet high, your horizon line will be at, at three miles. So you subtract that off 12 miles, that gives you nine miles for which to calculate the uh, curvature drop, which would be nine squared times two thirds of a foot. So- No, you actually, that, take, you don't, you don't you minus don't, off the horizon. Pardon? You don't minus the distance to the horizon in that calculation. Yes, you do. Nope, the drop is from your- Jaren, no, Jaron, li listen a minute. There's two ways you can go about this. If you wanna use the meta belt, meta bunk calculators that fine but you can use the tangent to the earth twice to calculate what the actual hidden from view is so if you're going out 12 miles okay say with a tangent to the earth mm -hmm. if you're just to take a tangent line to the earth and you want to calculate the drop distance then that would be 12 squared mm -hmm. One times point. two thirds of a foot which is eight inches mm -hmm. so that works out to uh, 96 feet drop, okay? 12 mm -hmm. squared, 144 mm -hmm. times two divided by three is 96 foot drop. Okay, now to take into account an observer's height, you take the observer's height, or which would be say six feet, uh, you can do it in reverse, takes take three miles, three miles squared is nine times two thirds gives you six feet, that's the drop distance. So you, so if you're mounted up, up six feet above uh, the earth, then subtract off the distance to the horizon line, which is three miles from the 12. So that gives you nine mm -hmm. miles in which to calculate the drop distance. So nine squared is 81 times two divided by three, gives you 54 feet of hidden view. Okay, got you, my bad. All right. I so we can go on. That's the way you were doing. Yes, 12 miles from the point of observation with say a snowmobile and a pole mounted to the back of it with three targets on it. And um, it should be well hidden from view at 54 feet. You'd agree with that, would you not? I would normal refraction um, absolutely it, it's going to be gone okay so my challenge is if anyone wants to come up here we'll perform that experiment and if I'm wrong I will reimburse you for all your travel expenses and your room and board here plus I'll give you a thousand dollars and so all all you're talking about showing is from the position uh, 12 miles away just showing those targets with a p900 However, you want to view it, and if you can if you can bring it back into view. Uh, if you can bring the snowmobile back into view and the target at six feet above the ice back into view, I'll uh, reimburse you and uh, give you a thousand dollars to boot. Okay, and so the reason that this is um, enticing to me is because you're just going to consider then that the ice is level. Well. Um, for the most part, it will be. I mean, if we're talking about fifty, well, a lot of people, no, listen. If we're talking yeah. about fifty-four feet hidden from view, it doesn't matter if the ice is going to vary three feet or four feet. Okay. No, no, I totally agree with that, and I think that it's um, an excellent experiment, and I would love to do it. So I will uh, let you know if I can do that. And you say how long is it frozen for? Okay. Um, usually, the way this works is this would be. Uh, the ice starts, we have 25 
inches of good ice okay so this is going to last for some time but the danger starts pulling in about the beginning of april uh we have to be careful we'd probably only be able to go out with snowmobiles not automobiles at that point because what happens is you start getting current flowing uh for the spring runoff and then uh it erodes the ice from underneath and you really uh can end up with uh thin ice in certain spots but up until um I would say uh, last year I was good. I was running my automobile out on the ice last year, March 26th. So let's say up until March 26th uh, should be no problem. And about two weeks after that, we could still do something, though, but we'd have to do it with snowmobiles and not automobiles. Okay. And the only thing um, is because I'm looking at the map or looking at Google Earth now, I can't find any sections that really look like they're that long that are unobstructed. But I trust you, you you know that there would be a 12 mile. Yeah, I, I could give you the coordinates if you want. Okay. I'll look it up here. Hang on a sec. I'll think up. And I have your um, your uh, Google page up now. Jaren, isn't that kind of what they're doing in Hungary? Like yeah, except like that. yeah, the only thing is is that uh, they're certainly not taking into, you know, they're not just saying that the ice is um, fl level. They're, you know, taking all those measurements into account the problem i have with the hungry experiment if anything is just i think they they're overshooting their wad if you will um going a little too far just because i know the problems i've had at four miles um so i recognize that trying to go much larger than that i think today we were they were seeing the laser at seven and a half miles but then the fog started rolling again so that's the only thing is that the weather is a problem um but with 12 miles i that's something i think is feasible especially uh if it's not raining or snowing if it's just cold that's the best time to get observations i mean that's yeah, can i um observations can work. i present here i could show you on google earth here or google maps if i can present yes yeah, yeah i can present you one second yeah you are presented <clears throat> okay. and then what he's talking about though is not really using um a laser no, no, I, I have the satellites, I have auto levels, I have uh, total state, any number of experiments. I have a 10 watt laser, however you want to do things. So that's okay. the difference. They're trying to do a laser, which I, you know, I, I like the idea of using lasers when we're talking about four miles. When you get too, too much more than that, I've just seen the beams diverge too much to, to even have any trust past that. Is uh, the map coming through okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. Okay. Um, I'll just back off here real quick. Okay. This is the section of Rainy Lake that I'm on. The blue dot is where I live. Uh, this is called Sand Bay. I do my experiments on here. Right now I'm setting up a set of poles. Um, let's see. Measure distance. If I, I'm setting up a line right here, which is... Uh, gives me six miles if you see mm -hmm. I'm setting up a set of poles here and I'm using a surveyors at uh, auto level net for getting everything set up I did this last year on a line that went this way into Canada but I'm setting up two lines now one going this way which is three miles mm -hmm. up into Canada and another one that's six miles uh, northeast into Canada. Now, the spot I'm talking about, if we need to do the 12-mile shot, is if you look here, this is a place called, um, I have access to, whoops, here, let me clear measurements. I can get permission to use a spot right here, which is by what we call Bald Rock. Oops. Damn it. <laughs> okay. And we can shoot on up into here. Right up into this finger of the lake. Wow. And you can see right up here we got a 12, 20 mile shoot. Mm -hmm. That's unobstructed. So if I back off on this, so you can see, we can go a 20 mile shot right that way that way in the lake Beautiful. but we don't have to go that far i mean it's very piece of cake here for a uh, 12 mile shot 
Yeah, I think right. 12 yeah. is a good number just because I think you're you're right when you take everything into account that 54 feet, it, there's enough leeway there that you yeah. shouldn't see it at all. But you can see here, see on the island, we shoot between uh, Sandpoint Island and Dryweed. This is Sandpoint Island. This is Dryweed here. And we've got a nice straight shot right in here into the bay here up in Swell Bay. Whoops. <laughs> so anyway, that's my offer. And uh, we have nice accommodations up here. I have a lady friend that uh, rents cottages on the lake and she'll give us a good rate. Okay. And uh, people can come up here and uh, spend any amount of time that they want. I'll be um, more than happy to ferry them around. I have plenty of snowmobiles and um, transportation. I have friends that will help and um, make it a good experience. Steve, we're kind of overlapping side strike right now. Yeah, I know he's always live, and I hate and I hate anyway, doing that. That's all I had. I just wanted to put that offer for anybody that might want to do this. Yeah, I, I think the best. <laughs> and plus, I'm willing to set up. I have a lot of equipment, uh, optical equipment, surveying equipment, and I can also borrow more if the, there's some experiments you can uh, think of that you would like to conduct. Uh, I propose it to me, and I'll get the equipment uh, here ahead of time, so it's all um, we don't have to be scrambling, and um, you know I'm willing to accommodate anyone that wants to uh, um, um, uh, set up or, um, you know, uh, um, generate some sort of experiment their, their own that they're curious about, whether we do uh, try to find um, drop distance on the um, ice. I, I, by the time, it, within the next three weeks, I should have all my marker poles and my targets set up for those two uh, lines that I'm going to be um, doing a, a shot with using uh, theodolite and uh, auto level, but we can do things with lasers that people want to do with lasers. Uh, I prefer not to use lasers. They're not as good as using a uh, surveyor's auto level. I, I the, the best response to your offer so far, and I love this. This is a comedy, though, but it was from Vane Veen. He said, no, George, I've already booked a trip to Dinosaur Adventureland and signed my waiver so I can ride the quad bikes for my vacation. I've just had to build, I just have to build a 60-foot wall for Kent or something else labor, laborious. <laughs> That's funny. I actually got a laugh out of that. Um, by the way, I throw this little teaser out there. Um, Kent Hoven, Arn Raw will happen. Stay tuned for details. There you go. Nice. So that's all you're going to get. But yeah, it, it will happen. Um, and soon, actually. But then, um, so. Yeah. And then there's the other section of the lake here. Is it still presenting? Uh, no, I'm not. Pre I, I, you still want to present? Go ahead. Oh, is it still presenting, Steve? Yeah. Oh, well, there's this other section of the lake that I was talking about here, as you can see. Is, um, whoops, clear measurements. You can see that this is really unobstructed here, uh, but this um, there we've got about 14 miles of here of clear. There's no islands in this section of the lake here. Yeah, that's clear unobstructed but, view. Yeah. So it, it's a good size lake. I mean, we we have um, a lot of uh, possibilities as far as um, making uh, any sort of curvature measurement. Okay. Okay, I just emailed you, George, um, so that we can con stay in contact that way. Sure. No, that's fine. All right. Thank that's you. all I, I have. I don't want to take up any more of the time. I no, know I you that. gentlemen want to discuss this more. So, so. Jaronism, so, uh, you know, are you, are you, you're, you're not familiar with George, I take it then, Jaron? No, I never heard of him. Okay. J favorite. George, you're not as popular as you, think, you thought you were. No, George is, George is pretty popular, actually, in the... Um, Flat Earth Debunker community he also has his own channel where he does uh, math stuff and electronic stuff, and occasionally I'll go over there and try to understand a small percentage of it, which I don't, but <laughs> at least give it a shot because he, he has very in-depth videos. So if you guys are not familiar with his channel, you might want to go check it out if you like math and electronics. You want to shout that out there real quick, George? Yeah, I'm well, fine. Uh, one of the things that, like I said, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up these targets. Here, I'll put it on the satellite. And, and Jenner's, um, I, I don't have any links right now in the video description because of the whole demonetization crap. If things, for some reason, you get demonetized as soon as you begin if you have any kind of stuff in the video description. So don't worry. After this video is done, 
and it's over and it is rendered, I will be more than happy, of course, to put your video, uh, excuse me, your um, link to your channel in there and all that. So don't worry about that, okay? Great. Not worried about it. It's just a, it's anyway, just a thing. Right, that I think that people should have their video links in the video descriptions if they're part of the uh, Hangout, if, if they want. Yeah, so. but this is what I'm setting up right now. Is this is my observation point at uh, at home base, and um, there's a island here called Franzen Island that has oops, that has a marker, channel marker on it. And um, I'm setting up a six mile line. In fact, uh, probably within the next week, I'm going to um, upload a video onto YouTube describing the uh, setup and the equipment that I have. And then I'll be giving weekly updates after that as I uh, pro uh, progress through the um, rest of the winter here. George, can I run something by you real quick on that experiment? Yeah. So let, let's just say, for example, you said that six miles we're talking? Uh, the one that I'm doing right now, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we were doing a six-mile stretch, and let's say that you have, you said you were going to put poles out there? Yeah, what I'm doing is there's going to be a pole right around one mile, right about here. Are you seeing this okay? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to have a pole at the end of Franzen Island. This is at uh, 2.7 miles. Mm -hmm. And then a pole on Home Island over here. Uh, in the Canadian waters, which is going to be very close to being at six miles. And the pole I'm going to be putting will be on shore so I can keep it up uh, through the summer. Um, and um, so it'll be there. Uh, what I'm interested in doing is from um, an issue that I had last winter was um, it took a while to understand the effects of refraction. I want to actually start this year making some real empirical analytical measurements regarding uh, refraction because I've noticed that um, the last thing you want to do is be near the end of the day in the wintertime when the sun is getting close to setting. Uh, you end up with extreme temperature variations and you can end up with uh, some uh, very... Um, uh, extreme refractive uh, conditions occurring and uh, the ideal conditions is to uh, have a day where you have maybe about a 10 mile an hour crosswind that's mixing the air and you want to be either early in the morning um, uh, right after the sun rises before the air starts warming up or kind of midday after things have s started to settle down but the last thing you want to do is be within about an hour or hour and a half of sunset then uh, things go really really get you want to avoid any kind of temperature time. variations fluctuations um, yeah atmospheric temperature conditions. is a real driver yeah. what you have to do is uh, you have to make temp temperature measurements in your optical corridor I ideally um, uh, you want to get a few measurements through the optical corridor so you can get an idea how do you of, take those measurements uh, I have a thermistor array that I made. Uh, it has uh, five thermistors on it, spaced 30 centimeters apart. And uh, I just hold that up in the optical corridor and uh, record the temperature. They're very fast reacting, uh, They and, and they're very sensitive. So you actually travel uh, down, down that very corridor, little... and you'll actually take temperatures in the channel, in, the, um, in, that, in that atmospheric Pardon? corridor? Oh, nice. So, George, this is my question about that test. So do you have something at the top of each pole that's, you know, like a, I don't know, some circle um, or something? Here, or hang something? on. Let me, let's see where I have that. Are, are you Canadian, George? I don't remember if somebody had asked. Pardon? Are you in, are you in America or Canada? Oh, what about Canada? Do you live in Canada or America? On which side do you live on? You're, you're cutting out on me. I'm not getting out your full sentence. Which side do you live on, Canada or America? Oh, I'm in the U.S. This you're is the, the border okay, here. That's, right. I, that's what I thought, but people I'm, thought you were in Canada. My home is right here. Sure. Okay. My home is right here, and this is the U.S. Canadian uh, I got you. I got border. you. Yeah. Right here from the, the border. So my question is, now, I know that you're going to take the satellite or the telescope and level it at the observer position um yes okay and that that is the i mean that's the whole basis of the entire 
um, Bedford level experiment and what Robotham came and said. And at first, you know, I read this in my research. I said, no, I think he's wrong. I think, okay, that kind of threw me off flat earth for a little while until I looked into it some more. Cause what Robotham said is you have to tell the telescope that things get smaller in the distance. So he said, if you angled the telescope to make sure that the first two posts, that every post after that will stay perfectly level with the crosshairs. And that's what made me realize that the earth is flat because I went and did that. And I do see that what he's talking about, that you can't, if you just level a telescope, it's not, the telescope is only taking that little circle view that you've zoomed into. And it doesn't realize that things in the distance are going to get smaller. So things fall away from the crosshairs when looking at distances like that. But my question is what would be wrong with if you, now it would be the slightest little angle change, but if you angled the telescope down, okay, so now it's like a slant, but it's it's hitting the first two sticks at exactly the top. That's why I asked if you had like a red ball or something, oh. red circle. If it hit those two, then if you found the third one fell off of the crosshairs, I would say the Earth is curved. But I don't think that's what you would find. And so far, when I ask anybody that, they refuse, like, you know, Jesse or other people, they refuse to even do that experiment because they say, no, you're not leveling the telescope. And I say, by leveling the telescope, you're always going to find drop, which is why we always find curvature, which is why people think the Earth is curved. But that's not what's happening. Well, let me explain to you what I do. Uh, Is this picture coming through? Yep. This is This is my top con auto level. And I don't know if you know how an auto level works, but inside the auto level, there's... You can think of there being a plumb bob. And the optics floats inside uh, the housing here, and it's driven by the plumb bob. So once the mechanism is free, once you get the auto level fairly level and release the internal compensator, is the optics lines itself up perpendicular to a vertical line to the center of the Earth. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter about the power of the telescope or whatever. There's some crosshairs in there. Let's see if I can find. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, there you go. There I'm, I'm shooting my three targets from last year. And you have a set of crosshairs, and that crosshairs float. And it is perfectly level with a tangent line to the Earth at the observer. Okay. It doesn't matter what's in the distance. This just sets up a tangent line. That's its sole purpose in life is to set a tangent line at the point of observation. Okay. So what I did is I went out, I set three targets. The target on the right here where you see two targets is one mile out. Mm-hmm. And the auto level is set. Nothing has changed. The auto level is on a solid base. And once the compensator is released, and the crosshairs float to establish a level line. You go out in the distance, and this target right here is about 16 feet up off the ice. Okay. I have a pole frozen into the ice and a 20-foot 2x4 strapped to it, and these are my targets. And you can see there's two triangles that thin out to the center so that in the distance you can tell whether you know, you're up or below uh, the center of the target mm. and what I do is I just adjust the target height so at at the point of observation at the auto level the center of the target is lined up with the crosshairs then I go out to the mile and a half target that's the one on the left mm. do the same thing set the target up so it hits the crosshair in the auto level and then this other target is out at two and a half miles and there you can see uh, uh, it looks like it's a little bit above the cross here. That's refraction occurring on this particular day. I had, in a no refraction condition, these targets perfectly lined up in the center of the crosshairs of the auto level. And then what you could see, according to different uh, atmospheric conditions, you could see these targets moving up and down. Uh, relative to the crosshairs, depending upon how much refraction there was in the atmosphere that day. And here we have very little refraction, but still you can see at two and a half miles out, the target looks a little higher than what it actually is just because of atmospheric refraction. So these are the targets that I talk about. Now they all look the same height, but 
or the same size, but physically they're very different sizes. Um, this, this target is the smallest size. I purposely designed the targets and scaled them physically in their size so that at the appropriate by perspective using perspective they would look the same size or angular size would look the same at um you know to someone viewing uh in the optics did this did this experiment go a little bit differently than you you had thought it would actually uh you you won't like what i have to say but uh what i did what the way this thing worked is once the targets were lined up and I mean, I did this over a period of 65 days. I monitored this thing every day for 65 days. And what I did at the bottom of these target poles, I drilled a hole in the ice to let the water come up. So I wasn't measuring to the surface of the ice. I was measuring to the surface of the water underneath the ice, which, you know, with floating ice, it doesn't impact the, the uh um, height of the water at all. Um, uh, like if you put an ice cube in a glass of water and let the ice cube melt, the level of the water will not change. Uh, floating ice just displaces its own weight mm -hmm. uh, in water. So it doesn't matter how much ice you have on. If you pop a hole in the ice, the water level will come up to where the same level it would be in the summertime. Mm -hmm. So what I did is by knowing the height, measuring the height from the center of the target down to the surface of the water, uh, I could then get, uh, I would know the height of the water from this tangent line back at the point of observation. And when you go through the numbers, they all worked out to within the measurement error of what I had was about a quarter of an inch. Uh, it all measured to within the quarter of an inch of the eight inches per mile squared. So, so at the one mile target, I was within eight inch of a drop. At um, one and a half miles, I was at, uh, uh, let's see, that would have been, oh my gosh. So what's the farthest post there? Two and a half miles. So that, that gives you about a, um, that would have been a drop of uh, six feet. So you're telling me. 50 inches, yeah. So the water is that unlevel. You're saying that the water level. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I mean, it's amazing. Level. I mean, you look out on the ice. My friend, my friend yeah. water's level. Water's yeah, level. that's right. Water is level, but it's not flat. Flat. Don't don't misuse the terms level and flat. They mean two totally different things in physics and surveying. Flat means flat like a sheet of plywood or wallboard. Level in engineering and surveying terms means a gravitational equal potential. It means it follows a gravitation the same distance from the center of the earth, a gravitational equal potential. Water will always move itself around to establish a lowest potential energy. And on a sphere like the earth, that means it will wrap itself around the sphere itself because that is a lowest gravitational equal potential. Yeah, real quick, and that's kind of what I was mentioning before to Jaronism before we went and, and did this hangout, was that the words he uses, he see, I, I, I said he conflates a lot of them, and the way he uses them is completely different than somebody who actually understands physics or science is going to be using these words, and that leads to a disconnect. And so there has to be a way around it. Either, either I would suggest maybe Jaronism if you, to learn these words the way everybody else understands them to so better communicate your position, um, or don't use the words because when you use these words and exactly what he just said, level and, and flat mean totally different things, and you're using them interchangeably. Um, real quick, um, would you mind if Reg pops in? Uh, he's he's in the live chat. He wants to come in and say hi. I know you guys have a long friendship for many many years. Um, can he can he join? <laughs> sure. You guys have had like beers and stuff together, haven't you? Like, no. no. Really? Yeah. Why not? I'd have a beer with you. I have a beer with anybody though. <laughs> it's beer. 
Especially with George. Can you imagine hanging out with George and having beers and just talking about this stuff? Man, it'd be it'd be awesome. Sounds like good times. It'd be good times. All right, let me get Reds in here real quick while you guys continue. So just ignore me for a minute. Um. So I don't know. Did that answer your question? Uh. Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, that's. Is this is this coming through okay? Yeah. This is my reference poll, and you can see here's a scale on the reference poll, and uh, I measure. Um, before I go out and measure the targets, I see, uh, I, you know, uh, the tripods and everything are left the, uh, where they were the prior day. And then I mount the equipment on and check to make sure that it's still hitting the same spot on the reference pole. And in this case, you can see like it's 81 and one quarter inch um, uh, on the reference pole here. And um, so... Uh, and then the other thing that I've done is at the half mile mark, one mile mark, one and a half mile mark, two mile mark, I take barometric pressure readings, uh, temperature readings, and humidity readings uh, so that I can determine the amount of refraction that, that's occurring. And what I try to do when I was making the measurements uh, from the center of the targets once they're set up to the surface of the water is to ensure that I'm working in conditions where refraction is a minimum. Um, Cause refraction definitely isn't your friend in this uh, uh, business. And you can easily tell refraction because if you look in the distance, uh, if, if there's extreme amount of refraction, you can start seeing a lot of shimmering. You know, the image will be unstable and be and get distorted and will shimmer. That, that, that is really extreme refraction. Some days uh, where you don't have that, you still have to take these measurements to determine the amount of refraction because uh, uh, just because you don't see shimmer and the image distorting and waving doesn't mean that there isn't refraction. Gotcha. But but if if the shimmering isn't occurring, you can be rest assured that the refraction probably isn't extreme because normally the shimmering is occurring because the air is unstable. Uh, how big and is that? Uh, how big is that? George, can you give us a definition of refraction? The way I, I I just have a very simple definition that I gave Jaronism earlier, which was basically uh, a change in the the angle, the change of, of light as it goes into a, a, from two mediums or from a single medium between boundary layers. It's just so so basically, it's a change of direction of light or change of vector uh, that exists because you have density differences within a medium or between boundary conditions between two mediums. That's basically yeah. I mean, for atmospheric air uh what causes refraction uh the real driver of refraction is temperature differentials which changes the air density Within of the medium itself whenever yeah okay. uh whenever uh light passes through different mediums different mediums doesn't necessarily mean it has to be two different types no it could be material. the same medium but different as it a gradient can be the same type of material but yeah having density variations as you go out with density or with distance. And that's what happens with the air is when you're going out two miles, you can't be guaranteed that the air temperature at the point of observation and at your target are, 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 is going to be the same or that the air density is going to be the same. And typically, since colder air settles lower um, to the earth than warm air, your light bends downward. Light will bend downward as it goes through denser uh, layers of air. So more typical, more often than not, you have your optical um, light bending downward rather than upward in a reverse uh, fashion. Uh, you can get it bending upward. I have actually seen it uh, with these targets where it did bend upward when I was close to uh, some days near some sunset where I end up getting a temperature inversion and uh, having warmer air lower than the colder air and then that will bend the light upward but was more it, often than not it? it's the other way pardon aren't you showing it bending upward no this is bending downward but it makes the targets look higher when when it's bending downward because think about it, the light is hitting the targets 
lower than they normally would so the targets look like they're elevated. This so, is how my targets are. So if we can real quick, uh, we got Reds in see. here now. Can, can we let him kind of jump into this real quick? I, I know we've been at this for yeah, go ahead. a little while here, and I, I don't want uh, – I love George, and I love listening to him all day, but, you know. No, no, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Hey, I, I did I did want to add something to what George is saying, though. Sure, I, then we we'll get to Reds. Uh, what's that? Yeah, go ahead, and then we'll get to Reds. I've been uh, taking a lot of observations and paying attention to the temperature of the water and the air, and what George was saying is, is like right on. Uh, uh, I've been able to take pictures in ideal conditions, and it's it conditions. What George is saying is right on. Then what you're observing when you're looking at your bridge, why aren't things higher in the distance? But, make no sense. Dude. Okay, well, yeah, they are. If you They're look higher at, than okay. So the curve is higher. The, her, the curve goes up. It's an up curve, but it goes down. Okay, I'm going to finish saying what I was trying to say. <clears throat> um, the refraction under standard conditions works against the curve. And if you go play with Walter Bislin's models, you can see what our model predicts. But um, anyway, under uh, when the water is colder than the air, and significantly colder, right you can you can get looming and um and, when, and then when the opposite is true when the water is warmer than the air then you can get sink, sinking and i've been out in uh multiple occasions taking pictures of uh basically the same scene and i've captured each of these things so uh this is ideal conditions right here actually this is a, a not quite ideal but pretty close to ideal conditions here uh and you can see how clear the air is, and and basically it matches exactly what we expect That's to see clear. on the globe. Yeah, that looks cool. And then, and then this one right here is sinking, and that's the same building, the top of the Marriott. And you can see that now there's way more obstruction. And then this one right here is just a slight amount of looming right here, but you can see in the looming conditions that the atmosphere is like really hazy. Uh, there's a lot of turbulence going on that night and in this one in this image right here you can see a rectangle right here and that's the top of a building that under ideal conditions you can't even see except for just the very tip of it right there so so that's, it's raising the the one building yeah, this, in relation yeah, to the back building. It, yeah, in looming conditions, when when the water is, is uh, colder, uh, then you see that building coming up over the horizon right here. Which goes back to what we're uh, talking about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, hey Reds. I know, I know. What's it's late, up? It's late what's for up? you. What's you're up? awake late at night. Do you realize what time it is for you where you're at? Yeah, oh, um, it's called a. It's called the B shift of a job. Are you at work right now? No, I just got back from work. Oh, okay. That oh, okay. That explains. All right. Hey, well, go yeah, for you know, it. You know, this, you know your buddy Jeremy. Cape, Cape Canaveral. What's that? Cape Canaveral is, uh, you know, very far away, and you know, you got to make that shill money. But we don't call it dollars; we call it shillings. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, shilling. Anyway, hi. Right, but you you remember Jeremy? Yeah, don't worry. I think right. You guys got some history. Do I? <laughs> do I? Yeah, well, oh boy, do we have history. Yeah, of course. I'm telling you guys. Go, you How guys have you been, go Jaron? Long, long time no rape. It's been a while, hasn't it? Fantastic. Uh, I felt bad for you that you didn't get to go see the Falcon Heavy. Yeah, it's okay. There's a lunch tomorrow I'll be going to go see, and I'm also just making another video in the background, so just please ignore what's currently being screen shared. It's pretty awesome, but you can just ignore it. Anyway, so I have to ask you, um... With uh, with the Falcon Heavy, there was some things said, and basically just rocket launches in, ge uh, rocket launches in general. Um, I don't know if you actually watched, but I actually made an offer to you, and the offer was for you to uh, fly down to Florida, where I would pick you up and take you down to uh, Cape Canaveral and give you a tripod and a Nikon P900 to man so that you could film these rocket launches yourself. <laughs> and then you can tell me with a straight face that it's CGI and fakery. Would you well, take I, me up on that offer? I wouldn't. Well, I mean, I would love to go. I wanted to go this two weekends ago. I wanted to go last weekend, and both times they canceled down here at Edwards, so I wasn't able to go. But um, 
I don't disagree. I don't doubt that they're launching rockets. My point of contention is uh, that little screen switch that you always see, which is the uh, the so-called, uh, you know, you see the rocket taking off, we get the good view that you're showing us, we get the view that the ground's showing us. Then the next scene, there's a black switch, and there you go. Now here's the picture of the rocket cone, and supposedly you're in space. You guys all want to believe that. You don't want to question it. So that's the difference between you and I. I question that. I want to know why is there no continuous feed? Why is it always this scene switch? Why is there always this um, this disappearing from the ground? We just see the thing go out and disappear. But then from their view, you know, we still see the ground. You just turn around and show the ground. It's just it's a different view. Well, here's it, it, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. In many of your in many of your arguments, many of your contentions, you basically ask us to provide you with a bunch of footage. Footage from the ground, footage looking down, footage looking straight up, all of it continuous and unaltered and whatnot. When, when do I ask for that? We, um, when Good have trial. you when have you asked for it? Uh, like, I don't know, how, how long has it been? 40 seconds ago? For footage of what? <sighs> you, just a, you want to continue with footage and that the problem that you're having is that it's not continuous footage. So My point of contention that. is that scene switch. It's been the same for 30 it, years of rocket launches. Yeah, that's, that's called video production. They're not concerned about flat earthers and what they want. They're trying they. to provide it, something for... Not, not, only, not only that, but if you have multiple cameras that you're trying to show people, then you are going to have to make a scene switch to show multiple cameras. Otherwise, each stream would literally, would literally be like five hours long, and they're not going to do that, especially when you're trying to do this shit live. When you launch a rocket... It's live, and when that thing lifts off, there is you're not you're not going back. You're definitely not going back. When it's gone, it's gone. SpaceX. What's that? You can go back if you're SpaceX. Uh, not the second stage. First stage, maybe. Second stage, not so much, and especially the payload. So if you're if you're basically telling me that your ultimate point of contention is that SpaceX is doing what they have to do in order to have a live broadcast, then I don't actually see where your argument is. What is your? Or, what is your... I, what is your your argument with the fact that they were able to change their live stream? That doesn't bother you. Ch change their live stream. What do you mean? Okay, so on the Falcon Heavy launch, everyone mm -hmm. that watched it live watched what they showed live, uh -huh. and some people made comments about it, like uh, "Smarter Every Day" said, "Oh, look at how these two bottom video feeds look the same, but they're really different." Other mm -hmm. people said the same thing. I made a video saying these video feeds at the bottom are the same, and I showed why they were the same. The next day. When you go back and look at SpaceX's footage, they were able to go back and change the live stream. Okay. Let me go ahead and give you everything on a silver platter. Okay. Could it be, and now I understand this is a crazy thought, but could it be that they simply fucked up the live stream and then went back and fixed something that they actually did in reality? Because Absolutely. totally because, could. Absolutely. Okay. So and then who else if that is, if that is, if that is, if that, 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 that? that is, if that is a possibility, why do you ultimately jump to the conclusion that it's fakers? There's some bullshittery going on and then make an entire video and a hangout about it with deep inside the rabbit hole. Okay, so if I were for uh, the last three years saying that the NBA was fake, the NBA was fake, they were rigging games, and then all of a sudden during the live uh, you know, NBA finals, there was a game that was played and then they went back and adjusted the live video, then I would make a big deal saying, hey, everyone, I've been saying that this is fake. And now they're changing live video. That's the difference. This yeah, is except they're not changing live video here. Yeah, I disagree. Did. No, absolutely not. Because the fact of the matter is, is that they didn't change the video. They merely doubled it over on two different windows in their live stream. Doubling video is not the same as faking video. You are conflating the two no, things. I didn't say they faked anything. You're putting words in my mouth. Didn't say they faked anything. I said that they adjusted their live stream. They even... And Okay, so so if they just adjusted their live stream, but in no way faked what they actually did in reality, what's your argument here? Well, they put the uh, fairing separation point that they originally had at the end of the video. They put it where it should have been in the middle. Uh, at the end point. So I you know the, the car thing opens up for the, the, the fairing separation, right? Uh-huh. And you see the car. Okay, well, they missed that part in the live stream. They didn't... They didn't put it in at the right time. They just had the crowd go crazy, but it was just a picture of a map. It looked ridiculous. So they went back and they took that picture of the fairing separating with the music playing and the big pomp and circumstance, and they input it in the middle of the video. 
And uh, so you're telling me that because of that, then fairing separation is fake? Or what are you actually saying here? I want to know I'm what your assertion is. Oh, 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 oh. is. Anybody in yeah, their right mind who will defend any company in this world for changing historical history, for changing the historical record, is a piece of junk. Actually, Wait, there is... Wait, let me, uh, let me ask you is, something. This is... Uh, are, you, are you suggesting that SpaceX actually changed their YouTube live stream video? I'm not... It is a fact. And what do you think about that, Sally? You do live streams. Are you, uh, you do live streams? You think that they did a live stream and they went back and changed that video? It's a fact. I don't, I don't think that's even possible on YouTube. It is well, impossible. That's the point, Sally. Well, well, well here, here's here's what I want to point out here is that I'm I'm giving you everything, okay? I'm going to give you everything. SpaceX fucked up their live feed. They doubled video over, whatever the case may be. You you seem to be forgetting one big detail here, and that is that SpaceX wasn't the only one filming and posting videos on YouTube. There were other people. My best friend, Astronomy Live, was actually there and filmed a continuous, uninterrupted view of the Falcon Heavy doing what it does best, and that's kicking ass and bringing shit to space. Okay, I saw so, he did a great oh, job. I, I... Yeah, he, he did a great job. So basically what you're saying is that the only real argument that can be made based on what you're telling me is that SpaceX sucks at doing live feeds. But how does that in any way, shape, or form point to a conspiracy or point to them being garbage? Okay, so they're, conspiracy... they're garbage at doing things that they're not exactly expert at, which is a live feed, but that's not the point of SpaceX. The point of SpaceX okay. is to bring shit into orbit, is it not? Sure. Answer me this, though. What is the, what is the definition of a conspiracy? Uh, definition of a conspiracy? Yeah, just in general terms. It's the it's the collusion of two different people or more getting together to do something kind of behind people's back. So when Soundly can't figure out a way that SpaceX can change their live stream because it's physically impossible for all of us who live in real world land, we can't do it. Well, it's Somehow. not physically impossible. I mean, I guess they could know somebody at YouTube get it done. But there you go. Is that not a conspiracy? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a conspiracy because well, then you don't know the definition of conspiracy. Are they? Yeah, but basically, you, you, you're I would saying, find it, you're I would saying, find it an interesting anom anomaly for sure, but I don't think it would be a conspiracy. No. Basically, it wouldn't be the conspiracy to the extent that you're making it out to be. You're basically pointing to this as some big revelation. In fact, SpaceX might actually come out to you and say, if you ask them directly, call their PR department and be like, hey, did you notice you did this? And be like, yeah. So why, is it, we, no, why isn't it in the description of the video? Because why were, they, why were they able to keep their their twenty one million views? Why were they able to keep their thumbs up? That is a conspiracy. Regardless uh, of why, it doesn't matter. I'm not even saying that they're fake. What I'm saying is, you guys are just this is all a test, and you guys are allowing a space agency, a private company, not even a government agency, to change historical record. They're not changing historical record. They That's did. where I disagree with you. It's okay, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing accidentally wow. fucking up a video does not change historical record. Otherwise, I, uh, hang on, hang on. Otherwise, when, when otherwise, you that, otherwise I red. could make the same criticism of you whenever you delete videos and say you didn't say the shit you actually did. Absolutely not, because I've, I've deleted the historical record and somebody has proof that I did so. I mean, what, what's the difference here? Is yeah, it but I have I have the original uh, live stream downloaded, so what are okay, the discrepancies so between the original record, live stream and the changed not, one? What I'm saying is, and, and just like I would have to, if I screwed up in a live stream, if I delete it, then the same thing should have to happen to SpaceX. They're not anybody more special than me. What did they change? Or not. Sure, they are. But what did they? What did they change? <laughs> what from the original to the the one that's out there now? What are the major discrepancies? They had accidentally doubled up on the original um, view from the from the the rockets. But the problem with that is, too, that they doubled up the screen and then cropped one of them. So that is deception, whether people want to admit yeah, it. It's, it's, yeah, it's not cropped. It's just... Um, it's cropped. For, it's, it's for the picture. Well, deception the, implies the, intent the, and motive. The picture, I mean, picture, you're it's, putting the apple uh, behind the, before, uh, before the cart there. You're, you're assuming that they're it's, being deceiving people. You're making that assumption. You're, you're assuming, oh, look, they're cropping. So Therefore, two, it must be de deception. Wait, wait, hang on. You're saying that it must be deception. But, you know, people do video editing all the time. People edit videos for reasons. Not all of it is for deceptive reasons. We all do video editing. I can assure you I do not edit videos for any type of deception whatsoever. I know Red certainly doesn't. I edit the videos. And he, he does, he does okay. a shit ton of all, editing, but he doesn't do it for deceptive purposes. Yeah, so but I think we, all that, operate under, we all operate under the same rules. 
so that I understand your rules. They're the same as mine. But what I'm saying is if you had a, a live stream playing and you had two videos up in the corner and the next day you realize you fucked up, you didn't mean to have the same video there to go back and be able to now put a video there. I don't there think that I don't see that's a problem though. Yeah. I, I don't see why I couldn't correct the I, I video when it was a mistake. A I mean, that's not deception. Wow. That's just correcting look, look, look. a video editing problem. I think we all would do that if we let had me, the ability. By the way, YouTube does have video editing abilities. They're minor, but yeah, I, I think we all would be let able me, to uh, fix let, that. Let me yeah. point to something. Let, let, let me point to something. Let me point to something. There was uh, one video in there that uh, that I made. I think it was. Uh, it was part of the flat wrong series. I forget whether it was part two or three, but anyway, I put a clip in there that actually wasn't supposed to be in there because the context just doesn't make sense with it. Instead of taking down the video and redoing everything and putting it back up and having the dates be all messed up, I just said, you know what? Fuck it. It's a mistake. And if people aren't going to bitch about it, then I'll correct them in the comment section. So if the mistake or if the video editing error that you made is minor and doesn't take away from the overall picture, which is SpaceX launched something into space, then there is absolutely no good goddamn reason why they should break it, bring it down just because of a small editing mistake or a live stream mistake. There's absolutely no reason why they shouldn't do exactly what you said. Leave it and say, sorry, folks, we've done a lot of shit in our careers and we made a mistake here. Oh, well, get over it. Uh, yeah, except they don't owe you that answer. You're ass you're simply assuming that they do. They I mean, don't. Look at what you guys are allowing. You're allowing a s private company space agency to do something that none of us are allowed to do. Actually, I just I just showed you how I did the exact same thing. So yes, actually, I am what allowed to do it, and I have done it multiple times. Actually, you've done what? I have accidentally edited my videos in a minor fucked up way for example i forget which part it was part two or three i, I yeah, honestly these were not live videos red there's a difference it's a editing mistake is basically the key the okay. key here Basi yeah, basically basically if i mistake they didn't if, accidentally go put a video on top of the other video uh here, here's the thing though here's the thing <laughs> and here's where i can show you that they're not rewriting history in their video in the original live stream which i also have downloaded I can guarantee you that they did not have a video of fairing separation until after everything else before fairing se separation already happened. Correct. So in terms of fitting everything to a timeline of possibility, everything fits perfectly. No, so if SpaceX, if, SpaceX, if, SpaceX, if SpaceX had a live stream, which they did, which they didn't have any ability to edit in real time, mind you, because it was live, the, all the pieces are there in the order they are supposed to be, which indicates that at the time it was real, it was not fraudulent in any way, shape, or form, and comported with correct history. Much of, They're hitting all the key points that you want them to hit on. And I'm sorry, but just because they're a private space company does not mean that I'm going to arbitrarily give them extra shit simply because I don't like them. No, no, it's not about giving them extra shit. Why would you allow them to do things that you're not allowed to do? Do uh, you mean things that I've already told you that I have YouTube, done? YouTube gives, YouTube gives features, uh, opens up features for different people based on their uh, subscription levels. And so it's obviously, it's it's obviously possible. Live streams. But it, I mean, it's obviously well, possible to change a live stream yeah, after the fact. Yeah, and you if, can. And if the, change, if the change is okayed by someone at YouTube, then what, what's well, the problem? Well, you don't even have their, have their approval. Look, at this problem. is a live stream right now. When it renders, it becomes a video. You can then go in, and there are video editing things you can do on YouTube to do certain editing okay. after if, the fact. You can, trim, you can trim the beginning or the end, in which case you have to have less than 100,000. Uh, Off to, to the middle. Okay, but you have to have less than 100,000 views. SpaceX had uh, 13 million. So there are only you know, 12 million... 900,000. They wrong. uploaded a separate video, by the way. No, the... they did not. Oh, they didn't. Okay. It's, not. it's the original live stream. It does, a, it does appear to be different. It is different. And it says live streamed on... It's a it's a freaking lie. That's what it is. And I don't even have a problem with it. If they just came... If it just said on there, edited, edited video, uh, changed on this date, they would have no problem with it. But All right, so sure, let me get your argument right. So you're saying that the video they have up there now claims it is a direct live stream, but it's actually an edited video from the original live stream. Correct. Okay. And that's uh, not a claim, that's a fact. There, uh, there, I'm looking at the uh, video right now. 
with the uh, stream. It turns out that there's two videos there, one of Starman and the other one of that one. I'm thinking of Starman. But uh, on the original, when when they're doing their live stream, I'm I'm just quickly trimming through this to see if there's any errors in it. Like, for example, if fairing separation happened before the rocket actually lifted off. Which one are you looking at, the original or the... The one, the that... one streamed on February 6, 2018. Okay. And I'm looking at it, I'm looking, I'm skimming through it, and I'm not seeing any, I mean, I see the doubling that you're referring to, that I'll go ahead and give you, but as far as the actual series of events and the order in which they actually happened, there's no issue. No, just the one part, if you go to right um, where fairing separation is on the little clock down at the bottom or whatever, and you hear the crowd go crazy and you hear the music change to the the um, Bowie so song. Let me let me give you a specific. Hold on, I was talking real quick. Yeah, I know. I'm helping you out, Jerry. Let me give well, you. Well, there's a map there. It shows a map, and you hear the crowd go crazy. It didn't. It didn't play right. It didn't. It wasn't a good piece of a video because they had the wrong video up, and then they took the video that they played at the end and input it there in the new video. Okay. If they have, for example, uh, X Split. X Split has the ability to like double up frames or double up videos for example let's just say they're using that shitty program god knows for what reason but again uh video live streaming is simply not their forte their forte is launching shit in the space so i can see why there would be mistakes and fuck ups and shit that they would want to fix after the fact well nobody, but, nobody gets to do that so you just when you uh, actually mistake. yes we fucking do as i have just demonstrated you have so not demonstrated that you could you can put a video over another video on yours they, they didn't do that Yes, they, what are you talking about? How do you think there's now two screens at the bottom? They just put it over on top of it. Uh, in the original live stream that was downloaded after it was done, and not only that, but some people were recording it live as it was actually happening from YouTube, there was dual screens there as well. Okay, so they took a new screen and put it on top of the one in the lower right. No, the the most that they could have done, and the most I'm seeing that they did do was maybe was maybe cut the feed in certain sections. Which, by the way, we all have the capability. No, of no, no, no. So pay attention, Red. If you go to the video now and you look, I'll give you the time to look. Um, you can see that they just put a video on top of another video. It's clear. Uh, all right. Do you have do you have a time code? Yes. Yeah, go to go to t go to. N not a time code, but go to T plus 747. Okay. T plus on, 747. On, 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 yeah, on SpaceX's clock. Okay. All right. Somebody, somebody's asking. Thank I think it's a good question uh, to Jaren. Are, are, you, are you suggesting that they, they, they lied, it's fake, or they just messed up, or all the above, or some combination thereof? SpaceX should not be given any permission beyond what anybody else can do on YouTube. They're not special. They, they don't get to do the NBA is special. The NFL is special. Uh, okay. But that's not my question. My, my, my question is well, specifically. Hold on. think about politicians when they say something stupid. Don't you think they'd like to go back and have that removed from the historical record? Uh, okay. That's the ability, the ability, I, hang on one second. Sally, 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 one second. One second. I can clear all this up right now. The, the ability yeah, to, the ability to edit is not the question. The question is, are you saying your argument is that they lied, they faked it, or they, they just made a video mistake and they fixed it. They're being deceptive and doing things that nobody else is allowed to uh, do. So the, all the above. They lied. They made a mistake. And um... I didn't say any of those. Okay, well, that's lied. what I'm asking. They do being they, being they lie? Being deceptive. Yeah. Being deceptive deception is, is a lie. Yeah, dude. deception is it pretty is. much <laughs> saying that you think they're lying. <laughs> You don't, you well, don't say so you're being deceptive and saying asked. you're telling the truth. That's not how it works. No, there's a difference. I mean, if, if they had said, if somebody said, hey, Elon, did you change your live stream? And he said, no, I did not. That's a lie. That hasn't happened yet. Oh. Uh, they're, they're just okay, being deceptive. Can, they're just not can telling I, can All I right, go ahead, Stanley. Yes, sure. yes, Stanley thinks he can okay. clear this up. Go ahead, please. Here's the original that I downloaded at, at uh, T plus 747. And look at these two bottom screens. Okay, you can see the landing pad here. You can see the landing pad here. Okay. Now let's go to the YouTube live stream from what? February the sixth, and you can see that these are not the same. Okay. That's so what Jer That's what Jaren's talking about. Yeah. Now go back in the in the uh, in the restreamed one, the the most current one. Go back to like uh, maybe five minutes before that, three minutes before. Well, I mean, I think that pretty much shows that it has I'm been. I'm going to show changed. you how they actually just put a video on top of another video. Keep going back a little bit more. This kind of gets away from the original point if I can get back no, to it. Back a little bit more. Uh, 
before that. There you go, right about there. Yeah, you can see the video is just placed on top of the other one. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's a shitty job. It's 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 deceptive because if you're going to make a change like that, <laughs> put it in the description. Hey, edited <laughs> on this day. What's wrong with that? If you, I think it's comment, I think it's an interesting anomaly because I'm not sure how you know you, how a normal Joe Schmo could do this, but uh, even when we, but I don't. I do, but it's not deception, dude. It's not. It is deception. Well, I think you're. I think you're arguing if, motive rather than. I mean, you're taking facts, not an evidence. You're assuming that it's being deceptive, and you don't have any evidence that's deceptive at all. You just. We have evidence that the they obviously overlaid, and it's probably shitty at doing video. Okay. Editing. Okay. Hey, here's the thing. Here's the yeah, thing. Here's the thing. Right, I want to bring this up. I want to bring this up. Okay, because this is actually important here. Let's hypothetically say that they're giving the special tools and special equipment that none of us have access to. Okay. Once again, mm -hmm. I am perfectly okay with giving you that. Not only on a silver platter I'll, I'll fucking gold plate it as well okay what if now this is just a big what if here what if they did that to make the record better reflect reality better That's reflect what how life works dude that you don't get to pick and choose who gets to to go back in history and change yes you do i, I, I will i i <laughs> This I is, will. This I is will, practical. On, this is on, practical reality. Okay, people that have okay, money pay YouTube to to get the tools that they need. That's how it works. Okay. Right? Okay. Let me let me go ahead and get this out here. Okay. If I am flying something, a rocket or whatever, and I have multiple cameras uh, cameras around this son of a bitch. Okay. And in the live feed, I accidentally double footage, but I have other footage that gives you more context as to what actually happening. Uh, as to what actually happened you're basically saying that on when me a person that wants to just set the record straight going back in and fixing it so that the redder that, that the record better comports with reality you're saying i can't do that and that i'm a <laughs> shithead for wanting to do that should we trust you red should you be trusting of people that they're always going to go back and correctly adjust their live stream uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Let me let me go ahead and think about that. So if I'm doing a live thing in front of thousands upon thousands of people with their own recording equipment that can very easily call me out on my bullshit if I were to it's, fuck something up. Thing, though, Red, Red, is, does, do people get to uh, film NASA spacewalks themselves or is that just one one group doing that? Here's the thing. Now, why not doubt whether anything live from NASA wasn't edited the next day? Because how here's we, here, hold here's on. how do we know? How do we know? I'm asking you. I used to think things were live. That's that's something I could count on. Well, the problem, Jaren, you, hey, you, you keep on using the word edit like it's a pejorative. Can, and editing can, is can not I, a pejorative. Can, okay, we all edit okay. videos. There's nothing wrong with that, especially even Nobody for a live feed. Live stream. People Wake do it. Yes, they Nobody do. They absolutely they do. What I'm trying to say is this. Okay. And you guys are a joke. It's so funny to hear you argue. It's like you'll do anything for space. It's, it's, it's so funny to try and get a word in and edgewise, and you don't want to act. Mouth and you'd be like, it's the color of chocolate, though, guys. It's just, it's not that bad. It's, I have no, hey, I, I have no vested shit. interest Jaren, in space. So it doesn't apply to me. Go Jaren, ahead. Jaren, Jaren. Yeah, it's just funny. I'm, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to ask you to do something that I know is very difficult for you. And that is to shut the fuck up and actually let me talk. Because I, I am going to answer your question, but you have to actually listen to the answer to understand it. I've already listened to it. Yeah, I, I'm going to try on. again, and let's see how far I can get before I get interrupted. Okay, there's a little thing there. And this thing is something I told you about. It's called Occam's Razor. Can I go to space and verify this shit for myself? No, I can't. For all, for all I know, you could be right. You could be right and that every spacewalk is fake and that the International Space Station is uninhabited and it doesn't actually exist and what, whatever, fine, 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 fine. I can go ahead and give you that. However, what is more likely, what you're telling me or the observations that I've been able to verify for myself pointing to a certain thing? So when I went out, I did an ISS transit. I'm sure you've seen it. Already has 920,000 views on it. Pretty good. So there's obviously something out there. And when we triangulated the ISS, we confirmed its orbit. Uh, another point for NASA. And when we looked at, when we counted pixels and tracked its speed, oh, look, it's going 4.7 miles per second. Exactly what NASA says. Um, oh, look, the orbit shows it passing at this direction, going this speed, and it's going to happen at this time. Oh, look, it happens. Another point for NASA. Look at, at, at through a telescope. Oh, look, it works out. 
rocket launches. Not only have I been able to view uh, liftoff, separate separation, boost back ignition, uh, entry burn, landing burn, the deployment of the landing legs. I've even been able to see the fucking fairing RCS. Nothing that had that one thing that hasn't been filmed by anyone. I was the first to ever film it. SpaceX got pissed at me because of that, but whatever. Tough shit. We've even been able to see the Dragon spacecraft in orbit using its RCS. There have been observations from all over the fucking place pointing to the fact that space is not fake, as you like to say, it is fake. Everything that we have done, every observation that we have made points to them telling the truth. And so who am I more likely to believe? Am I more likely to believe 60 plus years of solid evidence? Or am I going to believe a loudmouth that simply says it could be fake, it could be this, it could be that, but all I have to show for it is them maybe kind of, sort of, whatever, fucking up a live stream. Get real, dude. Get the fuck over yourself. You, you are free to believe whatever you want. Well, I mean, let's take let's, let's take let's take that uh, you know and kind of dissect it a little bit, Jaronism. I mean, uh, obviously, I think Red says a very valid point without the objectives, but he has a very valid point. I mean, we all have uh, like some knowledge of, of science and physics. Obviously, people in here much more than than many of us. Like George, by, he he does this professionally, but. Look, at he Red makes a, a brilliant observation that if we can actually look, and he filmed the ISS transit, and it was dead on. We can see what would he expect it to have as far as a velocity with relationship to the, the, the background image of the moon or something. Okay, well, hey, it's spot on. What would we expect for the frames per second to see over this amount of time? Oh, it's spot on. What would we expect to see? Oh, look, I have to predict this to begin with, the topic of the discussion. How do I predict this ISS transit? I mean, did did Reg just get lucky one night, say, hey, I'm going to point my, my, my P900 up to the sky and hopefully that I'll see the ISS? No. There was a model that predicted this. So what is more likely that all the physics, all the science, all the math, and all the stuff that we can utilize to show this is legit, that anybody can go do? I mean, yes, Reg has experience in this, but no offense to Reg, anybody could do this with the proper gear and training. Could they not, Reds? This is something that you have exclusive uh, and not things to, right? Not only could they, not only could yeah. they, but I've even offered to have them come down to Florida. I will put a P900 and a tripod in your hand so that you can film it right next to me. I mean, how would you explain something like Jaronism? Like, I mean, and I've done something similar. There are satellites that go across the field of view from my telescope on the Orion Nebula. Um, it, you'll see a little white, you know, spark, uh, little white things that go across your field of view. Those are satellites in geosynchronous orbit. You can you can even find out which ones they are if you really try to you know spend the time to do it. How do you explain those Heavens things? What, what what is more parsimonious, the law of Occam's razor, that all of science is wrong, all this stuff that he has photographed, all the stuff that we've studied is completely wrong, just because quote there's a possibility that it might be wrong. There's a, sure okay great there's a possibility, but it's not demonstrated that it's wrong. Just because there's a possibility exists doesn't mean that it's parsimonious as an explanation. I agree. I, I could be making a lot of videos about a lot of things if it was just down to, hey, this is a possibility that it's been wrong or that they're they're lying. But in this case, when you look at the amount of evidence and granted, they have things now that you can call the space, you know, the space station. You can say that there's people inside that, even though they never just go over to the window and show the thing out the window at night. And I've tried talking to them on Twitter many times to say they have this thing where they go flying above the earth and they say, hey, you take a picture of the station, take a picture of the sky, and we'll take a picture from up here, and then we'll match them tomorrow. Did but they'll never take a video live. Do that? Sure. I just saw a video where they were looking out the window, same curve. I just, I just literally saw that like a Not couple a days curve. ago. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is that they they won't do it live. They won't show. They can they can tweet. They tweet live from the space station. But I told them take a 10 second video of you showing the camera out the window, then yourself, then out the window. They won't do it. But then you would so, say you know, then you would yeah. say that one thing that w wasn't live because how do you verify this live? But you can do the similar thing with the correct memory wrong reds. But can't you do that with the Hermawari satellite? It takes pictures every ten um, minutes. You can look and see the. I, I, I also, and go look I also want to point. It. I also want to point out to, to one thing, and that it, it it'll take a really big lie. Now here here's the thing. If I woke up tomorrow to realize that all this was a lie, I would be pissed yeah, i know. would I, I would be so should. pissed and then i would i i would i i wouldn't know what to do with myself honestly but i guarantee you i wouldn't keep quiet about it so, so what here's the thing if i if i hang on hang on jaron hang on i'm not done making my point i'm not done making my point 
Yeah, you guys keep so interrupting if me. I, I'm if, I, if I came up with an idea to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to get in contact with an astronaut and I'm going to plan something ahead. I'm going to flash the station and I'm going to see if they can see me from the ground. And when we actually do this observation reality, we see that there were amateur astronomers who flashed the International Space Station. So all these amateur astronomers who went ahead and did this shit, they actually have a YouTube video of them actually doing this. Mm -hmm. And there's there's the signal light right there. Yeah, so where's the light uh, so, from the space station? So where's the this is, from the space station? And so and so and so You're, it's a being photo, that they so, and so and so being that they were able to flash the International Space Station, the space station was actually able to snap a picture of it using, you know, a long exposure shot to actually see the damn thing. Because let's face it, you know, I still think you don't know how exposure works, which is why videos at night are quite fucking useless. They were actually able to show that, hey, what happened down here? Matched up here. It's a photo. What happened up here? Matched down there. It's a photo. I can so put tell a blue me. dot on a photo. So, right, so, so is that so photo tell fake? Me, based, so tell me, based on Occam's razor, am I going to focus on the possibility that it could be faked? Or am I going to focus on the more probable explanation of they actually flashed the ISS and they were actually able to see the damn thing from orbit? I don't know. When you look at the fact that there's only been less than 500 people that have ever been to space, when That's you look at the, the fact question, that Jeremy. we went to the... That's not the question. Sure, no, the question you, is, you, you talk about this photo. For once? You, well, you, I don't can know why I you're answering a second question to the question posed to you. When we're, one thing we do try to do is in here is we answer questions directly, and everybody kind of abides by that. You were asked a direct question Great. about the photo, not 500 people been to space. Is that photo fake? What was the... Is it parsimonious? Yeah. More parsimonious so that is a legit picture that they mean, flashed, or is that... Not what they say. There's nobody... No, no space station person, no astronaut took that picture. It could have been taken from a high altitude a plane or balloon easily. Okay, easily. so so right there, that is an assertion. Now I expect you to back it up. So okay, my assertion that... is, it... go ahead. What? I just want. I, I was going to. I want to clarify your position. You're not saying it's fake. <laughs> you're just saying that it wasn't taken from the ISS, but it could have been taken from a, some other altitude from some other thing. It that could have been, no, it could have been taken from the ISS. It depends what you're calling the ISS. If you think that the people that you see on TV, like Peg Whitman and those you know people, are are astronauts that are in the space station, no, it was not taken by them. Okay, that's 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 a that valid is, claim, actually, though. Exactly. And and one thing that you will notice, and he has a history of doing things, of making claims and not being able to back it up. That's why I want to actually hold his feet to the fire here. You just made an assertion that this photo that was taken from the ISS is fake. And you've only seen it for 45 seconds. I know. So I, I expect you. Well, he did say it was fake, Ridge. Wait, wait, hang I on. Expect you. I want to make be fair to him. He didn't say it was fake. He said his, his assertion was it was not taken from the ISS. It, he does not say it's fake. He could have been. It's a real photograph taken from something taken else. From now he has to demonstrate, yes. though, what evidence he has that it was not taken from the ISS. Okay, I have evidence by showing you any high altitude footage taken from a plane and saying those pictures are taken from a plane. Period. Why would I need more evidence than that? Uh, except, except you don't. And all, and except all the, in all of the so-called examples that you have shown me of like. You know, this was taken from a plane. This was taken from a plane. This was taken from a plane. I debunked this shit back in 2015 in Jaronism Flat Wrong Part 2. What you asserted was a plane, that plane would have to have a height ceiling of over 330,000 feet oh, <laughs> in order to get the field of view necessary from a GoPro camera set to a 139 degree field of view. Mm. And this is one of those things where math actually comes in handy. That, that's six times you higher asserted, than most cruising altitudes. Yeah, and we went, and not only that, but I went over the height ceiling of many planes. One of the highest one being the U-2 spy plane at a height ceiling of 71 to 72,000 feet. It doesn't get anywhere close to the altitude needed in order to get the shot necessary. The only thing with wings that can go high enough and fast enough to get those shots is the space shuttle. And that, quite frankly, fucks up your 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 entire argument yeah it's even higher than that because i mean 50 000 high. is a high 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 altitude. yeah Most not only the, 30, not only so. that things can fly high that things can fly high way the fuck higher we're not so talking two times higher yeah, we're not ten, talking about three times, times higher. higher we're not talking about four times higher 
Yeah, ten times. Yeah, ten times. Higher, if you're cruising actually. altitude, okay, so I have, it's thirty thousand to fifty thousand, depending on your plane. Thirty thousand being the low. That's ten yeah. times over ten times higher. It's actually eleven if you said three hundred thirty thousand. So it's a huge amount. That's different. Base. You're breaking up. I can't hear you. Go ahead, Rich. Basically, what Steve is saying. Basically, what Steve is saying, uh, Jaron, is that you are wrong by a factor of ten. At least wrong about what? You are wrong in the assertion that these images could be taken from a high altitude plane you because get the, the field altitude of view. you would have to be at in order to get the shot necessary to make those images is a lot higher than what is physically possible within right. Earth's atmosphere. That picture that you just showed is from no higher, it could be from no higher than 20,000 feet. That's I would a- love for you to prove that to me. Okay, then I'll prove that to you. And then you're going to say, oh, no, but it says here that they zoomed in. All right. just, how, about we, how, about we, how about we do this, Jaronism? Because um, it is getting kind of late. I'm not going to make any assertions. We'll, we'll I do this. want you to actually demonstrate. I will shut up and let you and let you demonstrate that. We could either let you do it now or how about we can do this, Jaronism. Um, you, since you have that photo, um, I'm sure Reds or anybody else will, will be happy to do this because we are running late. Um, you want to take that photo and you want to give your evidence that it was taken from a height of no higher than what you say, 10, 30,000 feet? What'd you say? 20,000 feet. 20,000 feet. 20, okay. Feet, okay. So a low flying plane, I guess. I mean, uh, like I said, I think it's, I don't, I'm not a pilot, but if I remember correctly from my Microsoft flight sims, cruising altitude, 20, 30,000 feet high. But anyways, you explain how you can get that field of view from 20,000 and then uh, Reds, you have something or can make something showing it from a, be a much, much higher in the hundreds of thousands, like 300,000. Well, they're, uh, they're showing that blue light from, from 250 miles away. That's the kind of uh, – so well, we, the, to see the ISS, we have to be looking at something the size of a football field from the ground. But to see a little blue light from the, from the space – In the field of view. Just, you have to take into account the entire field of view. That's what Reds is talking about. It's not okay. that it's a blue not, light. Not, it's no, the field of that. view. Go ahead. Not, not not only that, but I actually just uh, want to go ahead and uh, state something real quick. Sure. Uh, do do you know that uh, um, this is a question for for uh, basically Steve? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that we had Sean Hufford come down to Florida for a bit, right? I do. Okay. Uh, question, uh, Jaron. Would you be able to see something the size of a penny? from over a mile away i it depends i think it would be pretty pretty close i guess maybe you could uh, i okay let me go even smaller then could you see something the size of the tip of a pencil eraser from one full mile away i, w- I would think not okay uh what if i went even smaller uh, how about just just the tip of a sharpened pencil you know or maybe just round it off a bit Around it off the just the lead, the lead of the pencil. You would you wouldn't be able to see that from a mile away, right? I don't think so. I've never oh, tried it. Perfect. Okay. Then uh what I'm gonna show you is the tip of something uh seen from over a mile away. Um so here it is. And there we go. And screenshot. That's my laser at Sean Hufford's drone. The tip of that laser is no wider than the tip of a pencil seen from over a mile away. Lights are different, dude. So yeah. yes, you can actually see lights, especially bright ones. They were using big ass industrial spotlights and a one watt laser to actually do this. Yeah. All of them pointing at the same spot at the exact same time. Yes, you'll be able to see something that small, that far away, because it is producing its own light source, and it's a focused light source at that. Yeah, and That is my worked. laser pointed at that drone, and that drone is over a mile away over a lake. And pil- pilots like will I, tell you that green lasers done... especially affects their vision. That's why it's illegal. It's federal against uh, law to shine a green yeah, laser you, or a laser. Why do you guys always do this? You're like, pretending like you're making a point I, i've done lasers across miles and miles too and seen them so what, what are we what are we arguing about here and what the hell is your actual argument you're saying you that you think you, you what said the hell is the difference between a pencil lead dude and a light you, why why, you to, then what was the point of bringing up the size of the international space station as it was relevant oh you have to see something the size of a football field from 200 right. miles away but when Just looking light. down down on earth it has to be this size not if the thing that you're looking at is producing its own focused light source dude we see the ISS in its reflected light, right? No. We also see it in a silhouette when it goes across the moon, as you saw in my video. Okay. 
The math works out. You can and, see and, the eye. And a silhouette means okay. it's, it's obviously blocking the light from the moon, so it, it, it puts a negative image on there. It's black, so you can see you can see yes. it. Yes. And then it's, it's also being illuminated as, as well, I'm sure. So. Let me uh, let me see, no, let, let me see what my argument is. Okay, what's your argument against my footage? I have none. Oh, okay, so it's real? Yeah, I've I've taken videos of it. Um, at least it has, I can get it with having that H shape. That's the best I can get. Yeah, and actually somebody okay, else just recently did that with their iPhone. Who, who was it, Reds, that actually had it? was a part-time vegan that took a picture on an iPhone with the ISS and, and, and wasn't sure what it I mean, they, they thought it obviously could have been the ISS, but you actually demonstrated in modeling that somebody had shown that it was that H shape, and they, they actually showed, hey, this is it. This is the oh, ISS. That was, uh, who was that? That was Anthony Wiley. I'm sorry, uh, Riley. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, he he yeah, might be getting was, he, he might be getting really tight lately. Like, <clears throat> yeah, he's <laughs> well, he's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, just just be sure he leaves the purple dil dildo behind. Yeah, I've anyway, already asked him to correct uh, a couple things he has not yet. Um, basically, <laughs> so, what I'm trying no, to say breath. here Wait, is that that's, that's you guys can believe that picture all you want. I don't that doesn't bother me. Okay, well, what I'm but it's my question still stands. My question is, if you were to follow Occam's razor. What is more reasonable to believe that NASA, you know, with 60 plus years of solid evidence and given the observations that myself, mm -hmm. Sean and Soundly and also to a lesser extent, Steve have done pointing to that thing or you, you what, what is, what is, what is more reasonable? You can believe that people went to the moon in 1969 and that technology Not with my question answers have done nothing. You can believe that all you want. You can believe that NASA Not my question. spends $53 million a day. You can believe that all you want. We're, we're glad we have Not permission from you to do that. I'm, I am happy, happy for that. Thank you. Um, we believe that anyways yeah. without permission, but I don't think yeah, that's really but, addressing his question. Yeah, my question is, given Occam's razor, what is more reasonable to believe? That which has 60 plus years of solid evidence and shit that we can also verify for ourselves? Or is a guy on YouTube saying it's all CGI and fake and conspiracy, man? Dude, you guys can believe whatever you want. That's what I'm saying. Okay, but do you, know, okay, do, do, do you know what Occam's Razor is? Occam I know exactly what Occam's Razor okay. is. So Occam, but, Thank you. Okay, well, let me, let me, for the audience who doesn't know, basically, if you have two competing hypotheses that have equal explanatory power, you choose the one with less assumptions. That's basically what it is. Now, these are not exactly. competing hypotheses, and I don't think they have equal explanatory power, but the parsimony principle, the principle of proximity, applies. So in this case, Reds is saying, look, all these people have studied this stuff. All these people have evidence. All these people can show this to be the case. I mean, th there'd have to be a conspiracy of millions of people in on it. And I'm sorry, people just just not are not like not that. Not true. Not true. Okay. Well, let's say hundreds of thousands I, I at least. Call, yeah, I have to call bullshit on that. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see how you can make a valid argument that what you're saying is parsimonious to what Red's explanation is. I just don't think that's a valid argument, to be honest with you. You can say, well, because yes, when you're you, talking about sure. trillions of miles, you can see, you can walk outside and you see three miles to the horizon, but you can see trillions of miles to other suns in the sky. Believe me, yes. there's endless, yeah, endless space. That yeah, there's, there, there's a reason that we I, can only see three miles, and that's because there is a horizon in the way. And when you're looking out into space, there's nothing in the way. And also, those points that are wait, trillions wait, and trillions wait, of miles away the have their own light source. does because unfortunately for you guys the horizon exists which kind of fucks flat earth up the ass sideways but that's a topic for another time so why do railroad travel so that just happens to be that the distance that things go to a point is exactly the same distance that the earth begins to curve away from you um are you talking about the law of perspective so on the moon, Red, would a railroad track uh, look like it does here on Earth, or would it look completely different because it would go over the hump while the railroad track hasn't met yet? I have no idea what you just asked me. Can you repeat that? On the moon, uh -huh. if there was a railroad track going uh -huh. away, you're looking off in the distance. Would it look like it does here on Earth, or would it look different because it would actually have the railroad tracks going over the curve before they met? Uh, before they met, well, actually, it depends on your zoom level. But if you're talking about no zoom, naked no eye. optical aids whatsoever, naked eye, then yeah, I'm pretty sure they would meet before they went over yeah, the horizon. Because when big they meet, object. would it's actually like... be a little bit closer. The horizon is at roughly over three miles away. Yeah, that's a pretty big object. Six foot so... six observer like myself. Wait, this still doesn't answer my original question. Just want to make that very fucking clear. No, your question. My question was again. What is more reasonable to believe that which has 60 plus years of solid evidence and also has 
amateur astronomers that can go out and verify this shit for themselves or a guy on youtube that says that it's all possible to be fake it's all possible that they did this it's possible that they do that but yet have nothing to show for it uh, which of that. those two options is more reasonable to believe you know what it's probably more reasonable to believe that their astronauts are not up there lying to us it's probably more reasonable to believe that nasa does what they argument. say they do it's probably more reasonable to believe that everything we're taught is true. It's probably more reasonable to believe that these scientists from 16, 1700 actually got everything correct. That's probably more reasonable. The truth is, if you look into it and you actually do real research and looking into it, you will see that it falls apart continuously. There's well, people who have lied throughout the way. You've seen people who have pushed things into their own personal worldview when they had two options, when they looked at two things, said observationally, we could go this direction or we can go that direction. They always chose the one that met their worldview. Okay. And they went that direction. Jaren, uh, Sally, Sally has a question. Unfortunately, that is, that is a pretty heaven burn of proof, and every single time you have even attempted to demonstrate that, it has fallen flat on his face. Yeah, let me, uh, let me, Jaren, Sally has a question. I have one, one quick question before I, I turn over to Sally real quick. Yeah, but you but Jaren, you, you say, uh, just real quick, if I may. Uh, I can demonstrate that later. When you say do the research, can you quickly tell us who have had, most of us have been to college or have some kind of college background or we used to read a lot about these topics and science and things like that. When you say do the research, can you give us what you mean by do the research? Could you, I mean, could, could I go to a physics book or could I go to a college and learn about these topics and go, oh, I see that the earth is flat. So what do you mean by research? And then Stanley gets the next question. Doing, you need to actually be able to um, review evidence and not just from where default to everywhere That's what evidence is. give me your sources and where to find this evidence at well if you only take the people who believe what you believe guess what you're going to believe at the end of that that's you're not what i asked where do i find the evidence to go do research that you're suggesting that would lead me to conclude that the earth is flat all of my videos watch all 300 okay so this goes back to his oh, original, so this goes back to red's original question which is more likely there you exactly. go i think he answered your question well, sure. reds I mean, he, he in an indirect way, he is he is basically you're, saying that. You're talking about more what's more likely to be true? Then sure, somebody on the outside surface, say, we couldn't have all been lied to. They couldn't um, have sat us all in desks and told okay, us all the so exact. That's what, not what I said. That's not what he that's said at all. What what I said. One, one one more follow up question, Jaron. So your videos is so people researching your videos. Where did you research to do the research for your videos? Where's the primary sources? What do you mean? I mean there. I read constantly. I mean, I've read Haley. I've read Physicist. I've read... That's not reason. You know, I'm, I'm asking you. I can't do what you read. Where do I go, besides your videos, that you did research on? What did you research to make your videos that I could go to the primary sources and research? Do you know how much uh, how much stuff I'd have to give you right now? What are you talking about? Give me, I, can, I, I, I can give you just one. Sure. Right. I, can, I can give you one. Yeah. Okay. Um, his, his research does... Okay. I'm just going to come out and say it. it's non-existent. Oh. The reason the reason why I can say it's non-existent is because all you have to do is go to Coolhar Logics uh, and his uh, I think it's episode six, Sphereless of World of Batshit, and you'll see the extent of his research and how he gets pretty much everything wrong. <laughs> and in fact, and in fact, I'm not done yet. And on my video, the fuckery counter challenge journalism part one, you will hear him say. If something is true, it just feels right. It doesn't need evidence or mathematical proofs. Basically, his evidence is simply whatever gives him a warm and cuddly feeling. Is that inside. what you said, Jaren? He has said that himself. <laughs> I have that recorded. Uh, I, I, I'm and not I sure, can, Jaren, is that, is that your idea of research? Right now, if you want me to. Yeah, I, 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 I believe no, you, Reds, but I mean, I want Jaren. What? I, I believe Reds, but Jaren, I want you to, to acknowledge that. Is that really what you think is research? Are you really asking that question? Yes, I'm. I'm pretty direct in my questions, as people will tell you. I have a. I have a recording of you saying exactly that. I say what the research. That's all that matters. Uh, yeah. It's that if something is true, it just feels right. It doesn't need proofs or mathematical formulas backing it up. It Basically, need mathematical formulas. Mathematical formulas do not prove anything. That uh, when mathematical formulas, like for example, the law of perspective, actually fuck your argument, wrap the ass, then yes, formulas are important. And they do prove stuff. Yeah, yeah you know, I mean, you do use they can, formulas they can, and proofs. They can back up reality. That's what they can do. And they can help us with uh, you know, projecting things out. Exactly. They back up reality. And the reality that they're backing up is not one that agrees with the flat earth concept. Yeah. I, 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 I got to tell you, Darren, I mean, I'm trying to be, I, I believe I am 
giving you so much principal charity here, you don't even probably know. But I'm trying to suss it out. But I got to tell you, Red, what Red is saying is is so much more the most likely case, parsimoniously speaking. I mean, you can't of make the argument dude. that your videos it's, are, are more funny. likely to be the case than what we it's all so know because to be about science. It's so funny. It's like listening. You you're like Christians to me. You you're like Christians I'm sitting around so, listening to no. Hoven saying it seems more likely what Hoven's saying here, guys. It really does seem like you know. I believe what he's saying. That's a he's, false he's equivocation. A if I've ever heard you it. Just are all, you're just Christians to me. No, that's a you're false just, equivocation just, because Hoven doesn't use evidence for the same reason. False reasons. equivocation. It's identical. I mean, I I it's criticize I criticize Kent for the same thing. reasons, though, Jeremy. Um, I, mean, I think, Kent, I think that should be impressive. Oh, hang on, hang on. Kent's been on my channel like eight times, and, and every time Kent's been on my channel, I criticize him. This Steve, this. what would I think? Steve, I'm I'm gonna about? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, Steve. I'm gonna tell you something. See, when when I said that I was doing research on flat Earth, a lot of people thought that I was gonna go to blogs or I was gonna read books or stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and and admit something right here. Books are kind of the the last thing I go to when it comes to doing research on flat earth. What I actually did was I did what the flat earthers told me to do. I went out into the field mm -hmm. and actually did some observations. Absolutely. And not only did I do those observations, I did those observations with the flat earther camera of choice, the Nikon P900, and now they hate me for it. So much so that I bought two of them to make sure that, oh, if one camera's being hacked by NASA, let's just make sure we can we can double <laughs> yeah, it up George, just George, in case. George would agree with you and on that. He not only that, not around. only that, but we were able to confirm a few things. We were able to find water curving with ships disappearing over the horizon and soundly actually showing hours upon hours of footage of transmission lines following the curve of the earth as well as the lake pontchartrain bridge i was able to show the international space station transiting the moon at the speed and at the scale that would be needed in order to match what nasa has been saying i have gone to not one not two but 22 fucking rocket launches seeing everything from boost back separation fairing separation even seeing fairing rcs that one thing that no one thought even existed and guess what i filmed it with my own camera mm -hmm. not only that but people on the other side of the planet have seen the dragon spacecraft in orbit with its fairings completely off mm -hmm. and it jettisoning it, it it using i should say it's rcs we have been probably, able we have been there. able we have been able to go out into the field and do the research and do the mathematics that flat earthers tell us to do and when we come back to them and say hey what you're saying is kind of bullshit all of a sudden they're saying we're not doing the right research we're not using the right equipment or we're using it wrong no, yet when we ask mean? them yet when we ask them to give us something to chew on all we get is watch my videos yeah, I well, mean, yeah, Darren, I did, I did, I did ask you, you know, what your idea of research is, and real quick, I mean, you do, you do agree that Reds actually is doing his research. I mean, you can't say he's not doing research when he's doing his own experiments. And by the way, I do have to end this soon. Sure, it is getting people late. People that could go um, and, and watch got... David Copperfield make things disappear, they can film it on their camera. But I'm not so dumb to say that's proof of anything. All right, it's um, proof that they would not show. So if if you want to say is is Red filming a show? Yeah, he gets to go film a show quite often. He's been to 22 shows. Where they've launched something in the air, they've made a lot of noise. It's great to film. People all there feel really connected to it. And then the scene switches, and there's a picture from space that nobody films. You guys can believe that all you want. You yeah, can I'll believe you that we went to the moon 50 years ago, and since then no one's gone further than 300 miles. If you want to believe that, you okay, believe that's all another, you want. That's another you assertion. Letting them but... push things out. Well, eventually we're going to have space travel. Oh, well, eventually we're going to go. To, there's going to be hotels in orbit. Then you look at SpaceX. You look at <clears throat> who's never put a person in orbit, do you think they're really going to put somebody around the moon in 2018? That's what that dipshit company said last year. Okay, never so you, will happen. You do, you do agree, though, what Red said. Um, Red said that you said that research is basically how you feel. You agree that you did say that. Then i got to turn over to Sally real quick. Whether I said that or not, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. But did you say it? It's a yes or no what question. research is. If I said it in a like, passing comment, like, you know, it, it, okay. what's true is what feels right. All right, so that. it may have been a throwaway sure. comment then. Again, yeah, I'm trying I to said, give you principal charity. The only charity. thing you need to do for research is look at what you feel feels good. Okay. I right. said that. No, 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 no. I'll, 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 let me just clarify. Sure. You said if something is true, it just feels right. It doesn't need evidence or mathematical proofs. Do you stand by that, Jaren? You Darren? said that. Do you stand by that yeah, or is that a throwaway that. comment that you just rather oh. retract? If something is true, then it feels 
Correct. Absolutely. Oh, I disagree. So, okay, I, couldn't so agree. I couldn't even begin to I disagree, disagree with you more on that. I disagree with that shit a thousand percent. completely. Yeah. And, this, and this, is, this is basically where intellectual honesty comes into account. Oh, anyway. Yeah, next. I have to fully what, what disagree with that. But, well, well, let's get what to Sally. I'm... Sally's been patiently waiting. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah, Sally. I'm shutting up. If something right. is true, then it just it feels right. You, you, That's you'll recognize so it as not being the case. True. So not the case. Okay. I know many well, things yeah, that doesn't. You believe that you I can give you. I can give a trillion called, miles. So I, yeah, real real quick, I, truth. I mean, there are such thing called vertical par paradoxes where things are paradoxical because they are not real true paradoxes. They seem like a paradox. They feel like they're not true, but they are true. So I don't think what you said even remotely holds to the case because there are many instances of things that we don't accept as true, even though they are true, and vice versa, the converse as well. So feelings has nothing to do with the reality or something what, being true we, or not. Men tell us that's what we, I, we, the way we find we truth is because our theory of truth that we use um, and everybody has their own uh -huh. you know ways of, of coming to truth determination but anyways Sam Lee, why don't you get in here real quick because I got I got Elon Musk, Elon I, Musk says that his picture of Tesla car in space was true it was because it looks so fake <clears throat> Probably the dumbest uh, statement ever made by any human that, that was a throwaway comment but anyway Stanley go ahead okay so going back to going back to the rockets the, the SpaceX launches um, and you're and you're trying to compare those against uh, David Copperfield illusions. Mm -hmm. um, Only you pay for them. Exactly. When, whenever, wasn't it David Copperfield that hid the um, Statue Such of Liberty? Liberty? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do you think that everyone in that area, like a, a, a circumference around the Statue of Liberty, didn't see the Statue of Liberty? Now it's probably the same thing as NASA does and cordons off a whole half of a circle that nobody can go anywhere near there. If you're a boat and you happen to be yeah, out in the water. Somebody was at the statue. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that somebody, security guard, somebody was at the Statue of Liberty and could see it quite clearly. It, it was yeah. an optical illusion was. that was presented from a specific angle. With the, rockets, is. with the rocket launches, there's people everywhere. Not and, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Actually, well, everywhere. That's a very good point. The, the Statue of Liberty, absolutely. if you look into that, is very small uh, arc that the illusion would work on, and uh, yeah. you know you don't have 360 degree field of view around the Statue of Liberty when that illusion I just was told being you done. That I think so launching. the point I'm trying to make about the rockets is not, not only not only can people see it around uh, from all different angles, they can triangulate not all different angles position, and they Dude, can triangulate. I'm not gonna let you tell lies. Go sit out in a boat in the water in the Atlantic Ocean. Go sit out there and watch a launch. See what happens to you. Dude, okay. there are people on the beach. You said all watching around. it, and there are people on the full opposite shit. side. Watching full it. Of shit. There's videos on YouTube. I'm not full of shit. It's on YouTube, dude. You there's said videos people can watch launches from all around, and that's bullshit. You, if you're there's anywhere out the water, on, you will be people arrested. People on top of the freaking uh, building that the rockets held in before. It's that's one direction. Oh, okay. Okay. There's Hang people on. where red, red, where red's rhetoric Great, is that's at. That's not all around. There's people on the other side on the beach looking at it. Great. That's dude, not all around. It's seen from all different angles. Me, not me, you just calling it a lie. It, you just calling it a lie is is just you being denialist. What anyway, the about? point is, he said you can see I'm trying to get angles. to my original point, <laughs> you, which you is, angles. which delightful. is, have you triangulated the position of the rocket? No, because I think that they launch rockets. You didn't two hear Two people me. on opposite sides can triangulate the position of the rocket and tell you exactly how high it is. Okay, great. And Red, I, I think you, uh, Astronomy Live should do that next time. Yeah, I, I think we should. So here's, here, here's let me let me show you something. Port Canaveral, rocket launch viewing to the south. Okay, and I said over here. Right? This over here. I know how hey, rocket hey, 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 over here. This beach is public. Yeah, I know how rocket. And guess what? That is to the north. This is Titusville, mm -hmm. which is to the west. Mm -hmm. This is this is Sharps. Mm -hmm. This is the Groves. Mm -hmm. This is the Burden. All of these locations mm -hmm. are free to get to. And guess what? There's the Air Force Station. Here's where the Falcon lifts off. There's where the launch. Atlas lifts off. And guess what? Rocket. And guess what? And guess what? This counts. <laughs> this entire area counts as all around. So I and think I you said, owe soundly an apology. I absolutely do not. I told you that I think they launched rockets. What part of that did you understand? I said that when they switch the scene, when the thing goes out of view, is when they pull the trick, which is out over where? 
Show me where over the land that people get to watch it go to space. Dude, the, po the, the, the point is is that the people in those locations can triangulate the damn rocket. They can tell you where I it's at. I said that the rocket launches. What are you talking about? When it's in the freaking air, they can triangulate it. They can tell you how high it is. True. I said that that's true. So keep arguing the same point to me that I think is true. Where can... You know, uh, okay, the original uh, uh, assertion that you made, which is that they can't see it all around, and they can. He not, just showed you that. I said when it gets out of your view, when they switch the view, and the thing goes off and dumps out in the ocean, nobody sees that. He's, try, he's trying to divert. Yeah, I'm diverting. Like, this is what I've said the whole time. It's been my uh, argument from day one. Actually, we're, not, actually, we're talking about what you just asserted about not being able to see the rocket launch from all all around it. Because I said you cannot be in the ocean. You cannot be in the ocean. They don't let. What does that have to do with seeing the rocket launch all around? Okay, it. let me let me go ahead and ask a certain question though, because you were asking where do we get to see it go into space? So let's let's just focus on that. Who has an echo, by the way? Whoever does, just mute. Okay. Uh, nope, still there. Who has an echo? Okay. Okay. Now now it's gone. Now it's gone. Whoever did mute it. Okay. So let me go ahead and answer that question for you. So actually, it's you, Jaren. Go figure. If you have headphones, go ahead and use them. I've been using them the whole time. Yeah, I, I don't okay. Well, it's probably a I, I heard muted and you still had the echo. Yeah, that's a pretty bad echo, but whatever. Anyway, so answering that question, where do we get to see it go into space? Where do we get to see it go into space? That was your that was your question. We have actually seen the Falcon, not the Falcon, but the Dragon in orbit. I have a video of it. We have also seen the International Space Station in orbit transiting the moon. Not only did it transit the moon, it transited at the perfect time. By perfect, I mean expected time in relation to its orbital parameters. So not only have we seen rockets launched into space, which shows that they're actually launching the space, we've seen objects in orbit more than once from multiple locations by multiple people and not only that but we've even seen these objects in orbit doing things like for example using their rcs which is the only way to maneuver and change your orientation in space so again what is more reasonable for me to believe that they're actually launching and doing this shit, or that you're somehow right because of a warm and cuddly feeling that you had in your gut. No, it's not warm and cuddly to find out that you've been lied to. You're just making the assumption. The worst right? <clears throat> but we have to end this. Soundly, I, I'm going to give you guys the, the two last words. Um, we are going to take this over to the Great Debate Community Discord channel. Uh, I'll stream it to this channel rather than the other channel so people don't have to like, find the Great Debate Community community channel, which, by the way, you should all go subscribe to anyways. But uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll stream it to this one, but it will be through the Discord. Anybody can join the Discord um you the link will be in the, all the video descriptions from any of my videos uh, i'll try to put it in this one but just go to look go look go look at a video i did yesterday it's from the great Debord, great community discord channel um that's how we'll be, be running a lot of these after hangouts because anybody can come into those and they're already validated they're verified they're vetted there's no problems they can't be sniped um they can't be bombed so it's a this is a better way to go but anyways let's finish this up uh sally i'm going to let you and then jaronism get the last word so Jer sally you you go next and then jaronism Unless Reds wants to add something first. Uh, sure, I can go ahead and do that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I guess I, I guess just as a final thought, um, I have been asking for evidence of a flat Earth or evidence of a conspiracy in general. In which case, I have not gotten anything of substance. I've gotten assertions. I've gotten, uh, you know, just. Well, just that base baseless assertions based on what based on their fear that they're being lied to it does not help me in any way shape or form to be told that something is the case or something is more likely to be true and yet i get nothing that points me in that direction and so i have to just kind of repeat a offer that i made not too long ago not only to you jaren but to everybody that asserts that either the earth is flat or that space is fake or that we've been lied to and that is to provide me with some solid evidence that i can actually verify 
that I can figure out for myself because I have done what you guys have told me to do. I have went out into the field, into reality land. I got up from my computer desk, went outside and looked around for a bit. And after doing those observations, I came to the conclusion that the nameless, faceless they taught us all in school. If Even if I were to accept that I took it for granted that the Earth was round or that space was real, fine. But after doing more research, I'm even more convinced now than I was when I first started talking to you back in 2015. So in the end, I want this. Here's a challenge for you, dude. An honest-to-God challenge. Actual evidence. Actual evidence that either the Earth is flat, that space is fake, and that they're lying to us or whatever and actual evidence to show that they're not actually in space or whatever i want i want something tangible if you can provide that to me please come find me you still have my skype and please take me up on my offer and come down to cape cape canaveral because they're because it's good in two ways one you'll be able to see it for yourself and realize that they're not faking it in any way shape or form Fuck whatever the live stream shows and two, you would be able to see my hideously ugly face for yourself. I recommend a waterproof receptacle if you do take me up on it, though. He is pretty With that, ugly. I leave it to Soundlit. Yeah, he is I, pretty it, ugly. And I'll throw listen, in this before... I'll throw my, this my face before. is the recent crib death is a thing. Yeah. I'll okay, throw in uh, this before uh, Soundly goes real quick. Jaronism, um, I might even have somebody willing to pay for your trip. My girlfriend already said she would as well. Well, I... We got somebody who's offered this to somebody else, a uh, flat earther, and I'm sure they'll be happy to offer it to you. Um, so we'll discuss that later on. But I think we can arrange something like that where we we can actually make it a, a paid for trip from somebody who is willing to 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 uh, front this. Um, so and I have a P900 and a tripod waiting for you, good sir. Yeah, I mean that's, that's yep. kind of a hell of a yep. deal. So Sally, you go next, then we'll give Jaronism the last word, and then I will kind of wrap it up and help you where to go after this. So I'm going to play this clip from Tau Ceti Alpha for. Uh, I love Tau Ceti Alpha. Boosters landing from, from five different angles. These boosters are landing from five different angles uh, around the landing pad. And while that's going on, I'm just going to close with this. Um, you know, there's only there's only one model that predicts the observations we see in reality. That's the globe model. There are no other models. And it, not having a model means you literally have no reason to believe that the earth is flat, which by definition is irrational. So my suggestion to all flat earthers is to just provide a model that can predict the observations that all of us have, that many of us have made now. Amen, so it really, com really comes down to that. All right. Darren, do you want to get the last, well, I get the last word is, my hangout but, <laughs> but but go ahead Jaren, please take it away and like i said i will put your video link in the video description at some point later on tonight well thank you mm -hmm. it's not a big deal people can can honestly believe whatever they want i don't it it doesn't bother me they can believe what they want the, what bothers me though is when people are uh talking about things that they're seeing or you know talking about their observations and the amount of upset butthurt that people get over people talking about the flat earth is is telling to me so is the fact that you know it's something that was taught to us when we weren't old enough to think about it and then we were taught how ridiculous the flat earth is and then when you get to a certain age and you're like okay let me go find all this evidence of the round earth and a lot of things are just conjecture or things that you have to assume you take these assumptions and before you know it you're kind of confused as to why was i told something was so ridiculous when there's compelling evidence to it and you guys can say there's not but if you ask anybody who's done any research into this they will tell you that, well, there is some compelling things about Flat Earth that they've discovered in this research. I'm sure Red wouldn't admit it, but he just said he's done research into it. He might admit there is some compelling things about Flat Earth. He may have disproved him. He may have felt like he's completely disproven him. But the fact of the matter is that Flat Earth is not as dumb as we were taught. It's not as ridiculous. There's a lot of things that can be seen both ways. So to me, when you look at why would they teach us, uh, for instance, you know, oh, the water just falls off the edge and all these different things that they want you to feel like flat earth is dumb. And when you bring it up and it gets put in the media like it's been lately, everyone thinks it's so ridiculous. And if you were going to teach a bunch of people a lie, you would have to tell them the truth was ridiculous and that the lie was very educational, was very intellectually smart. And Red said that he's asked for evidence. 
but he's been given evidence and he refuses to look at it. Like I just showed him that SpaceX can do something that nobody else can do by editing their live feeds. That's not evidence to him. Uh, how about this stupid car with Starman in space? Red works on cars. If he doesn't realize that that's the biggest load of bullshit that's ever been portrayed to the human people and that they believe it, they believe there's that red car in space that those tires are holding up to the pressure. You can see the earth through the wheel well where an axle would go. It's a, the whole thing is fake. But if you want to believe that that round ball that's going around is where you live, by all means, you can believe whatever you want. Um, what it comes down to is there's two different people in this world, people who are capable of thinking on their own and people who are so scared, so afraid to think outside the box that they just believe whatever they're told to believe. That's what you guys are. You will not think out of the box. If I want to know what Red believes or what you believe, Steve, or what you believe, Soundly, all I have to do is go look at Wikipedia. That's what you believe. Your beliefs are not a human being's beliefs. They are what you're told to believe. You are parrots. Right, Period. right. So, well, you can say, right, I mean, that's the truth, is that you guys are not capable. Because if, if you got a thought that you said, I wonder if something, you would immediately go to someone else. Well, what does Wikipedia say? What, is, what does this physics book say? So you don't want to look into anything yourself. I, and, I, all right, hang on. Uh, he, got, he got the last word in. So I let, let me. I know. I know. Okay. Shut up. He's so wrong. <laughs> let, let me wrap okay, it up. You can here. say I'm wrong, but I mean, that's. All right. So, anyway, I just, uh, I just, final thing. Yep. Red, I just, I'm, I'm down to, yeah. to go down there. I still think you you haven't explained to people why you won't debate with your name and with your face on YouTube. doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, um, it's just not impressive to me that you, you're basically a troll. You'll yell and scream at people and call them names and uh, make jokes about them, but you can't even do it with your real name. Me, I could be a troll if I want and call you all a bunch of names and run around joking and just do it under a fake name that nobody knows who I am. What accountability is that? And you have science on your side and you can't even go with your real name and your real face. What bigger pussy move is that? And, name something and, that's a bigger pussy move than that. All right, let me, let in me, let me in case you haven't noticed, uh, there are crazy people yeah, out let me, there let me that close would rather up. kill I'll us address talk this. to us. I'll, 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 I'll close this up. Yeah, okay, I mean, so let me give you, the final thoughts on death this. Death threats from flat earthers? Jared, yes. let me, let me, oh, boy. Let me, let me, give, let me give the final thoughts on this because I have to wrap this up. It's late. Um, okay, so this is where I stand with this. One, um, people's anonymity is important on the internet when there are crazies out there and the person's anonymity gives no relevancy to the effectiveness or the amount of, of veracity to a person's claim or what they're what they're false. saying let me finish somebody can just make uh, a bunch of i get no back jaren jaren i get the closer this is my time to speak everybody has to like mute um because i'm closing this up you can you can talk in the after show if you have to want to address something afterwards so um, the person's anonymity is their own. I understand why there's reasons to be an imitator. There are troll groups out there, but a troll group, a troll is somebody who doesn't necessarily believe what they believe. And we just had a hangout called uh, the Science of Internet Trolls. If people are interested in what people do as far as uh, how to handle trolls and what they are, we just had a huge video with this with Scientist Mel. I, I highly suggest go watch it. Uh, I've known Reds for several years. He doesn't exhibit a single, single solitary characteristic of any of the 20 things or 18 things that were attributed to what would be a troll. Not a single one I could attribute to him. Not even if I stretched it, I don't think. So I would definitely say that calling him a troll is a personal thing that has no relevancy to anything that he said is an ad hominem uh, because you didn't actually even address what his argument was. You just said that he was a troll on that, what his last things he was saying. The other thing I would have to say is that I find that all, flat earth is one big argument from incredulity. Uh, is basically is there's a possibility you could be wrong, ergo, let's believe that you're wrong. And that's not how you approach life. That's not how you approach science. You have to look at the, the, the parsimonious aspect of what Stanley was saying for models. We have a model that works. We have a model that makes predictions. We have a model that we can use based upon the shape of the earth being an oblate or regular spheroid or regular oblate spheroid that we can make predictions from it of when certain astronomical events will occur. We can put things into space. And I think it is a fair thing for, for them to ask, Darren, um, next time you, you hang out or whatever, for you to provide a flat earth model where we can look at and use that same model to try to make the exact same predictions we can from around Earth. I don't think that's unfair because that's what the, that's what it boils down to. It, what Stanley said is the most, really. best way to end this is the fact that if you do not have a model you have nothing. You have an argument from incredulity. But with that, I'm going to tell you guys, we're going to have the after show on the um, the uh, Great Debate Community Discord because that's what it's set up for. We are going to stream to this channel, not the Great Debate Community Community channel. However, I would suggest go, go subscribe to the other channel because most of the time we'll be streaming to that one. The link to get into the Discord will be in 
every video that I have just about. So go find an old video like yesterday or whatever. I'll, I'll try to throw it into this one. But that's how you get in. Anybody can go in um, and join the Discord. Anybody can go in and be a part of the conversation. It is more of a free help for all. However, it is moderated. And just because you show up does not mean you'll be able to speak until you are verified. You have to have a proper icon. Um, you are not shown into you um, because if you have an icon that's inappropriate, you won't even get off server mute. So come in with a proper mic. You have to make a Discord. What's that? And you have to have I said Discord. I'm going to have to make a Discord. Then. Yeah. yeah, it's really yeah, easy. Yeah, you're going to have to have a Discord. It's really simple. And Nim just put the Discord link in there. Thank you. Um, there's two ways to do it on Discord. You can do it from the browser itself, or you can download the app. The app, I think, is better. But if you just want to get on, go using the uh, the uh, web browser. But anyways, uh, for all 140 people or whatever I had watching, um, like I said, please continue with it in the after show. I may not be a part of it. The people in here may or may not be. I don't know. I think Soundly wants to join. I don't know if January's or Reds has time. I know Reds is really late for you in the morning, but we, what, what I usually do is I just set up a Discord, let it go for a couple of hours at night, and you know, you I would do your own thing. I would actually love to join. Um, I although the answer to this question will uh, go ahead and basically decide if I join or not. Mm -hmm. Jaron, are you going to join the Discord? Because I would really like to talk to you about those tires. Yeah, and it's unmoderated. I mean, it's, it's still not moderated, but I won't. You guys are going to have a free for all for all I care. Well, I think it's interesting that Soundly didn't show the video I tried to get him to show earlier. That you know, that's not the question his... asked. <laughs> answer, answer my question first. Are you actually going to show up to Discord? Because again, I would really like to talk to you about those tires. I have a Discord. I could try to get over there. I think it's interesting Plus, that you didn't show the video you wanted to show. Well, I gave you the link to show it. I didn't know that. And I, I told you to so show. So we're going on the Discord. Okay, uh, guys. I will, I will give go you... ahead and make a Discord and we'll be over No, I there. have the Discord. I have the Discord. I'll give you guys a link. I already have it set up. Where, where's uh, the link going to be here? Um, I will. Yeah, shoot it in the side chat here. Uh, shoot it in the in group the chat, chat or the outside chat? Group. Right. I don't have the video up. All right. Um, I'll, sh I'll sh get it to you right now. One sec. I'll be coming in under uh, Vincent Jones' Discord, by the way. So that will be me. Uh, let me make sure I get the right thing here. All right, stay stay in here after I go off air because my computer's like slow when I'm streaming. So um, I'll give you this link in the link in the internal. But anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, please leave comments. Please like the video, share it, dislike it, whatever. I mean, it, it's all good to me. Um, but I like these types of conversations, like they are productive in some ways. So with that, guys, we'll be seeing you in the after show. We're starting streaming that in about 10 minutes on this channel, and the the, the link for that will also be. Um, Put on Twitter, Facebook, and other media sources. Okay, thanks for Jaronism. Drop by, and we'll see you guys in about another 10 minutes. Peace.